What is up, Friday Nighters? Welcome back to another episode of Just Another Friday Night. Uh, I am one of your two hosts, CM Chuck. Um, beside me is not Double A Adam Antum Adam tonight. Uh, here we have instead a very familiar face. Uh, the only other person to ever host a full episode with me, Untamable Amy, is in the house. What's up? Uh, been a guest. I feel like you should be closer. You feel like you're out of frame. Yeah, like let's let's make it even there. Um, guys, um, yeah, so if you read the intro, we're here under, you know, unfortunately, this situation is the way it is, not the amazing, beautiful background that Double A puts up with all his awesome comics that I love so much to see behind us. Um, my makeshift background sucks balls, um, but it'll what? have to do for now. Well, I mean, I love Nightmare, <laughs> but I mean, it's like, I wish it was filling in the whole thing. And of course I got- We do what we can with what we got. Repping our fr fellow pods and friends on the back there on the stickers and that you can see and- I mean, next time we'll, it'll be, I'll, we'll try to soup it up here. We'll get Amy to hang some decorations <laughs> or something like that. Uh, guys, as you see, uh, AA is with us here in spirit. Um, so, uh, double A, this one is for you, man. So, um, this Hello. beer is going to sit here for you, brother. That's double A's beer. Not here with us right now. Uh, cheers to you guys out there in podcast land and at home, hopefully. Yeah, guys, so uh, since the beginning of this show that began in the pandemic, we have been telling people to wear their masks when the vaccine came out and get vaccinated. Um, and we all thought we made it through and uh, our family was untouched and Double A's family was untouched and it was really awesome. You know what I mean? We thought we were doing everything right or whatever, you know what I mean? But Delta comes out and new things start happening and uh, here we are. It affected my household and it affected his household directly. So. Because of that, I don't have my mic. I don't have my headphones. Those things are at his house, and and uh, he can't come bring them to me, and I can't go give them to him. And so it happened. And also, some really good friends of ours within you know podcast land, uh, Alfred, if you know from uh, uh, Collectors Cove and um, uh, the comic book uh, comic book character podcast, also uh, appeared frequently on uh, Invincible Comics and more, is also sick with COVID right now, as well as his girlfriend who would help him out with his live uh, videos. So we're super. Super sucks, man. You know what I mean? I want everyone to get better and be better, and I want everyone to be safe and stuff. And so it's unfortunate that, you know, um, everyone's been affected, you know what I mean? But I talked to Double A. He's doing great, um, as is, like, my mom. And, um, you know, um, they they uh, Double A said, show must go on, man. He said, hey, so he's got a quarantine. So do the next two episodes without me. Uh, same with us, too, because my mom, you know, we, we I took a test on last Saturday, and I was negative, so was my girlfriend. But, um you know, uh, that doesn't mean that in the time since then, that, you know what I mean? It could have been, you know what I mean? So, but as of right now, good negative test. Uh, Amy's going to get an at-home one to take and, and do a test. But but like I said, Double A said show must go on. So this week and next week will be a different, unique-looking show. We hope that you will um, uh, continue to join us and be here. And plus, I got uh, my awesome sis here again, the only other person to ever fully have the co-hosting spot, the Andy Richter to my Conan O'Brien. Um, and we got some really cool stuff lined up I'm trying to do, guys. So there's no subject tonight. There's no topic. Uh, it's going to be free form. I'm going to leave the comments up. We're going to read the comments. We're going to hang out. We're going to drink some beers. Um, you guys talk to me. Tell me what you're watching, reading, uh, playing video games wise, what co things you're collecting out in the world uh, right now. Um, have you guys checked out my YouTube with my nephew, the monkey and the unky? Uh, <laughs> please go check it out. Our videos are super fun and, and they're just uh, quick and easy. No better way to judge a toy than from the point of view of an eight year old. So he yeah. knows better than anybody in For my sure. opinion. Yeah. Um, so that's just a, a really much uh, more lighter show that we do without of me being so rigid as I am with this show. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of tough sometimes. Uh, so uh, Jason in the house, what's up, bro? Keep your merits. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate that. Steve, no worries, Steve. We're all doing great, man. We're getting better. We're fully back. So nobody was down a long time when I talked to Double A. He was doing really good, uh, but he just, you know, we don't want to take any risks. So we're just keeping separate uh, right now. Um, Albert, also, thank you, brother. I hope you're doing okay. Appreciate you being here. And Steve, cheers. So cheers to Steve. Here you go, buddy. Cheers, Always guys. a classic one to have with, with Steve. He loves, Double A loves the cheers with you. And here, Double A in the back there with this beer in the back there. <clears throat> <clears throat> treating the man like he's not here the man is still with us it's just you know we're trying to be safe and he said like i said show must go on <laughs> i told him we could do virtual but we've had a wishy-washy experience with that in the past and so you know i don't think he wanted to kind of do that so um 
we want to be smart. We don't want to be the people continuing the spread and, and, and all that. So if you read through my intro this time, you know, you definitely hear me say that in the end. If you haven't been vaccinated, uh, we highly suggest it. You know what I mean? And if you're not wearing a mask, wear a mask. Wear it to protect yourself. Wear it to protect your loved ones. So, mm-hmm. But anyways, on with the show. Uh, guys, so uh, let me bring in uh, my first uh, guest of the night. Uh, what You know what? Before that, before I do that, uh, Amy, I didn't even ask you. How the heck are you doing? How's your day? I'm, I'm doing good. Chatting I'm away doing here. Good. Um, getting ready for school for yeah. my nephew, uh, my nephew, your nephew. That's my, my nephew. Son. Yeah. <laughs> On Monday, and I know everybody else. Is, a lot of kids have already started, so um, we're really looking forward to it. It's a little scary, but um, to spend another year at home uh, doesn't work, right? Yeah, it doesn't work. I, it worked, but. Yeah. I'm not a teacher, and well, he I wanna, needs to be in that uh, classroom environment, that totally. setting. That's so. how I learn best. Too, yeah, you know, and I'm glad that life, a lot of kids know? are already back in school, and yeah, um, I'm, he's excited to go back. He's ready. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But other than that, you know, well, mom too, obviously. Yeah, but totally. She's doing really well. Um, she didn't get it as bad as a lot of other people have, you know. So we're really grateful for that, mm-hmm. and. Um, just doing the thing, just working. And I know. I like your t-shirt, I'm excited. man. You're yeah, right my t-shirt there. is cool, courtesy of my brother right here. And I didn't say it, guys, but this is our 25th episode of this season. We do 25 woo, woo. episodes a season. All right, 25 no shots. I'll do the first five. So you guys do the rest. rest. <laughs> so uh, technically, and double A reminder, this is our 75th episode, but we're really not going to celebrate. We're going to do the celebration uh another another time when double a is here you know what i mean right. but it is the 75th episode and it will go that way on so on and that's a big stuff. accomplishment um for you guys so i'm super proud of y'all yeah. and yeah it's a lot you of know uh work, but it's i fun. love the show and i'm still trying to catch up because i know me too i'm behind this guy too. likes to talk a lot yeah i'm behind <laughs> on my own show uh amy says we should cut the episodes down to like an hour but then where would it be without i got an guys? hour free at work i can't do three hours free at work. yeah <laughs> Yeah, so let me throw these. We already read these comments, but I'll just throw them up real quick. Uh, Jason, thank you again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve, no worries, Steve. Uh, Albert Prayers, thank you, Albert, man. I love and miss you, bro. Good to see you on the show. Steve, my favorite comment, cheers. And, of course, play it safe. We certainly will, man. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, guys, like I said, free form tonight, free format. So open up, talk to us about what I want. And I do have guests. I have guests in the waiting, and we're still uh, going to do the 30-minute thing because I have to. Uh, Kara in the house. What is up, Kara? Uh, Kara, I hope you got you a big old bottle of whiskey, and let's put a nipple on it and suck that down she for got, the night. You got a couple of bowls, I'm sure. I don't know about the whiskey. <laughs> oh, Lord. There you go. Hey, man, you know what? The devil's lettuce is all good. Uh, all right, guys, let's bring in our first guest of the night. Uh, they're especially happy to celebrate something particular about today that completely slipped my mind in the midst of everything, but, uh, they certainly did not forget and they definitely reminded me. So (laughs) these two have been guests, uh, in October during our Halloween, uh, spectacular me and double a did one was with us on, uh, our werewolf, uh, by Friday night episode. The other was with us on um uh, all the king's men all the king men mm-hmm. and i was just watching creep show earlier with uh with my lady jess uh jordy Verrill. so uh rich in the house what is up rich uh thank you for being here brother um but uh yeah without further ado from those two episodes uh let's get them in here live now um uh, but the holts are here Ooh. oh there they are Hold in the house. Hey. In the house. Hey. You guys hear I got my mask on. Got our mask on. I'll Y'all are masked. Thing. I don't know how well the, that'll protect you guys with the holes in the front there. <laughs> but yes, happy Friday the 13th to you guys. Happy, happy Friday, Friday 13th. 13th. Happy Friday the 13th. Cheers. 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 You definitely reminded me of the of the pseudo holiday, I guess. <laughs> my favorite holiday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, man! What are you guys up to? Are you guys? Uh, looks like y'all are in front of the lovely library there, masks all around. Yeah, yes. Yeah. We we got plenty of books to read during COVID. So okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> if fails, we got books. Oh, I see. Roxanne got a little sign back there too. That looks awesome. Oh yes, yeah. sign. Great sign. Great sign. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, guys. Yeah. So, uh, guys. Um, Talk to us a little bit. What have you guys been up to since we last saw you on Just Another Friday Night in particular? You guys haven't been on since October, which I feel like we were experiencing a whole pandemic between that time. Obviously, we too have seen you guys, but the Friday Night Faithful, I mean, they've seen you guys commenting and in the in the group, the, the Friday Night Faithful, but um, what else? What else have we been going well, on? 
It's kind of been here. Uh, during October that uh, month, I did about 31 nights of Halloween-inspired dinners. And I did 31 days of costumes. So that was my most favorite year, actually, for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, very cool. I, I gained about 30 pounds. So did I. Because... <laughs> She made food every day. 31 days of cocktails, appetizers, yeah. and entrees. More and more drinks every day. It's all mm -hmm. love, Holt. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember. And uh, Roxanne, were you putting up pictures of that, all that delicious food and cocktails on your Instagram? Mm -hmm. I didn't put it. I didn't put the food on my Instagram, but I did put the costume. So if you want to see me okay. as Frankfurter or Bride of Frankenstein or Lydia, yeah. then I am on my Instagram. Okay, great. And I put it up right there for the Friday Night Faithful and the Friday Nighters to see at Madam Roxanne on Instagram. She, Roxanne does a really fun Instagram. She uh, oh, yeah. does photo lab and I things like that. I think if you're that. like a Halloween buff, horror buff, uh, your page is definitely the page to be at. So thank you. And guys, I'm going to be checking my phone, which I normally don't do during this show, but only because we have I have other guests lined up. So, uh, Amy, what else you got for the Holtz? What have you guys been watching, doing in the world of pop culture? What have you been enjoying? Oh, and Roxanne, before you answer that, please show us your awesome earrings. Oh, well, take a look at these bad boys. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And it matches this lovely shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> One at camp. I don't have any earrings. <laughs> no, go but he does have a really cool shirt in yeah, honor of it. all the king men. The episode yeah, he was go. on, go the Overlook Hotel. Hotel. Mm -hmm. That's just yep. super awesome. No, I actually, uh, I took I took your advice to him and I started watching uh, the Titan. The, oh, really? the Titans. I like okay. it. Me too. I like it. I, I mean, I'll binge watch two or three episodes every night. It's really good. It's really good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Audio was going on a little bit, but I heard you. I heard you, bro. So yeah, oh, I'm so glad to hear you're watching that because I've been the only one watching it. Uh, there's certain things I can't convince Double A to watch, so he's <laughs> we're, we're we're not we weren't gonna ever do Titans, but now that uh, I know you watch it, right. Amy watch it, I've got to come up with a show for next week as well because I won't be seeing Double A then. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know how far along I am. I mean, I've been eight or nine episodes in, so that's the whole season. I don't know. But yeah, it's, I'm it's, still in the first season. Uh, I think episode seven, but I well, plan on finishing it. Well, I can tell you guys that season three just began, uh, and HBO Max <laughs> dropped three episodes, so uh, that's where we're at right now. Uh, and I have a lot of thoughts on that show, but I'm going to save it because I would definitely love to talk Titans with some people, but it's great. Roxanne, are you watching it with John? No, I've only seen parts of it because, I don't know, I think I was I was doing something, and he, he watched it, and then I kind of like came in on – was it episode three or something? Yeah, something like that. Mm. Okay. So okay. I, I haven't seen it, but it seemed interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I, yeah. It, I really, it, I really, it's, I'm really enjoying it. Like I want to finish it, but uh, I, best time for me to watch it is at night when I'm laying. Their theme down. songs kick ass too. So yeah, uh, you yeah. know what? Uh, Kello said that the theme song. Kello's my son. In case anybody doesn't know, but he said he really liked the intro song. <laughs> yeah, I love it too. It's a great intro. But the, the uh, whoever does the soundtrack for that show. Man, they're doing a killer job. Yeah. I, I went on Spotify yeah. to search Titans playlist, and I found a really yeah. great playlist. It's uh, good. It, I, 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 I'm <clears> loving it right now. Uh, John and Roxy, I don't know if you can see uh, Kara's comment there, but Kara threw that comment up about you guys. Uh, <laughs> it says two of my faves. Yay, she, Kara, how are you? What's up, Kara? Cats. Rich Hi. says, what's up? Uh, we already said, what's up, Rich? And, of course, thank you for being here. You said, of course. And then uh, this is what... Kara also said the Holtz rock my world as they do ours and everyone's that they come in contact with. We try. We try. And regarding your sign, Kara said she used real blood. <laughs> Scary. Pig's blood. Pig's blood. Pig's blood. <laughs> and then uh, Chris, a uh, Riz in the house. Rizzo in the house says, I'm just here to say what's up. I can't hear y'all because I'm at the beach, uh, but I'll watch the replay later. Stay invincible. Thank you, brother. We appreciate that, man. We certainly invincible. will, man. Great auctions yeah, over at Invincible Comics and more. If you guys have not yet checked out their Facebook group, uh, go and check it out. It's so much uh, fun in those auctions. Double A's gotten mm -hmm. stuff out of there. I've gotten stuff out of there. Uh, I they, those guys get really cool stuff to for sale. So it's really really rad. I was gonna tell um, you, I uh, since I've listened to your show mm -hmm. since from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now I buy comic books. Mm -hmm. I never bought comic books before. <laughs> yeah. Ever. And now, I mean, well, they're back there somewhere, but I got like stacks of comic books. 
because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy this, oh, I'm gonna buy that. And it's like, oh, my favorite episode of y'all's is the Craven, the oh. uh, with the awesome. Spider Man. The, that I love that episode. I thought it was awesome, and that made me want to go out and like look for stuff like that. Start looking at comics. Start looking at series. And of course, you get down that wormhole, and you're you just keep going. And yeah, so it's, it's been really cool. Yeah, man, that's one going way back. That might even be one of our thirty minute episodes where we yeah. talked about our favorite. I don't think you ever had a thirty minute episode. Yeah, yeah, actually, okay. in the beginning, in the beginning, you did. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, we used to have thirty-minute episodes, guys, and it wait. was, uh, yeah, wait, wait, <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. Uh, that's back when people were telling us, uh, "We want more content. You should do a longer show." And then it's, I well, think an hour, four hour hours 30. later, <laughs> yeah, like SpongeBob, right? Three hours oh, yeah, later. <laughs> um, Mom is in the house. Mom, glad to see you here. I would throw your comment up. I can't. I, you probably put in an emoji, but it doesn't. Let me see it on this <laughs> particular one, but we'll check that out later. But mom, thank you for being here. Wish uh, you luck. Hope you feel better. Yeah, yeah. She's doing really great, man. So thank you for saying so. Um, yeah, guys. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come on. I just wanted to bring you guys on for a quick hi and hello. Uh, catch Always up with fun. you guys. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want to stay and hang out, I'll drop you guys into the bottom and then we'll bring you guys back maybe a little bit later if you're still hanging out. You Sounds guys awesome, man. We get I'm it. here. Keep Hello. doing what you're doing. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. John, Roxanne, we love you guys. Love y'all. Be safe. Have a good night. Night for life. Yeah, you too. Boochies, boochies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, that was John and Roxanne here, man. We, we love them. We appreciate them being oh, yeah. here. So uh, that is super awesome. Um Sis, tell me uh, what else. What, what you know? I know you mentioned the Titans, but what else are you getting into in the world of uh, pop culture, things like that? I know you know people know we're huge Walking Dead fans, um, right? But- Which I speaking of the Walking Dead, I'm still trying to catch up. I missed uh, the okay. last season. Okay. So I am behind, but um, not for long. Okay. I just kind of been trying to run through the things that I've been trying to finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I, I actually I get did that. A, a rewatch of Game of Thrones, as you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you finished right. it. That's a pretty uh, big, uh, actually, a pretty I, hearty I, I, rewatch. Right. I'm already in the last season. I only have a couple episodes left, but mm-hmm. because I already know what happens, I haven't been determined to finish it. But um, I don't know. I just wanted to restart it and rewatch it, and I did. And of course, every time I rewatch it, this is like maybe my third time. Yeah. Uh, I always catch new things and I remember things and I'm, I'm putting more things together. So that's, right. that's really awesome. Right. Uh, um, I, I was glad that we got to talk about it some, because one of the things we said about Game of Thrones was that, you know, I think that a lot of people got a distaste. Um, and I hope I didn't cut you off. No. no. Excuse me. But because it was like, we had to wait so long for like another right. season, a whole year. Which and of had course that magnificent production and the, all the money they put into it, of course, it's like they're making a movie. So, you know what I mean? Like it took that long. But, um, you know, what I think when you watch it all together, it's it's probably better because like there's no it way is because and you get all this stuff fresh right in your brain. Right. Because, you know, you're waiting for so long, uh, you know, a year to see the next season. And, um, you know, you don't know what to expect. But then when you're rewatching it, you do know what to expect. But it's going by a lot faster. I think you had asked me when I was mm-hmm. watching it if it was taking as long and I told you, well, no, because I'm able to get through it faster because one, I already know what's going to happen. And so like, I can kind of like be doing other things while I'm rewatching it. Yeah. And two, because, um, I don't have to wait. Right. So long. For the right. Next, uh, episode or show or a so season. So better this time or not as good. Oh yeah. I still absolutely love it. 100%. I love it even more every time I rewatch okay. it. And okay. then I, Go <clears throat> to learn and love more things about each character. Each character, every time right, I, right. it. I need to do a big rewatch. I haven't and done that yet. I think it's- another part of the reason why I haven't finished the end is because of the end. Like it's the end, and that's it. And I don't want that. I don't want it to be over. So um, I still got a couple episodes left in the last season, which I think was season eight. So I'm getting my way through there. But I okay. had finally uh, finished Boardwalk Empire. Which we talked about. Yeah, that's right. We just talked about that. It's so funny because I know I introduced you to that show and then you ended up finishing it before I did. And then I finally finished it recently um, after Boardwalk's been out for, I mean, we went to Austin for the thing. Oh, yeah. That's where I bought the glass. I bought a glass from that show. And um, I finally finished that one, which I was really okay with the ending. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that show, but I would highly recommend it uh, if you're into that 
gangster mobster was the 1950s, yeah. 1920s, 1920s, I think, 1920s, 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 30s. Yeah. So it's got like Al Capone. <clears throat> um, uh, I can't think of some of the other characters. Uh, well, Nucky Thompson is the one that is uh, He's the main character. is the main character by by um, Steve Buscemi. It's not a real real uh, real life character, but right. but based on uh, one. And then you've got like Lucky Luciano mm -hmm. and Meyer Lansky, like those type of, of characters. Kara has a good question here. Kara, we're gonna get to your question. Give me just a second, and we'll get back to that. Uh, let me see here. Hold on, I'm getting a message. Uh, okay, a uh, guys, I have another guest I want to bring in. I mentioned him at the top of our show, um, but um, there's no better thing to do than to hear from the man himself. So let's bring him on now, uh, Alfred from Collectors Cove. Hey guys, happy oh, to be on the man. show. Alfred, this is my sister Amy. You have not had the chance to meet, but this no, is I haven't. Pleasure nice to meet you virtually, you. Amy. Yes, nice to yes, meet you. Nice and, to meet you. Uh, brother, we know that you're based on your Invincible Comics post and your post that you are dealing with COVID yourself right now, man. Um, yeah, and your lady. How are you guys holding up? Um, it's it's been kind of rough, you know. Uh, we are definitely caught off guard. Um, we're both fully vaccinated, mm -hmm. so you know, not that you can't get it. Of course, you can. Even right. being fully vaccinated, the you know the whole point is that it's supposed to lessen the symptoms so that you don't end up in the hospital, you don't end up on a ventilator, uh, which thankfully we are both in the clear on that. And right. um, Lib's got a really bad like wet cough that she okay. has not been able to shake for like four days now. Uh, the doctor actually prescribed like four different medications for her. Uh, sorry for her. Um, it's it's been interesting. Um, I, I mean, I can say that I'm just I'm really thankful we did get the vaccine that we were able to get it because, like for me especially, there was like one day where my oxygen dropped to ninety, and like I was not doing too well, and I was almost to the point where I might have had to go to the hospital. And I know that without the vaccine, absolutely would have been in the hospital. So right, right. you know. But happy Man. to answer any questions anyone might have. Um, I don't know a lot of people that have the vaccine that have unfortunately have gotten COVID. I mean, thankfully, I don't. What I'm yeah. saying is like a lot of people have been asking me questions because um, it's not that common yet. And I mean, hopefully it stays that way. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's kind of funny. It's like, I saw you like a week before that that happened. And I know we both talked about our allergies being bad, which we're still dealing with. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Cause my, my nephew has it. My sister has it. We live in one household. Then my mom tested positive last Friday. I got done with the show, got home to that news. Unfortunately, you know, double A has small children in his home. He got spooked too, but, um, yeah. Didn't expect, except him he he unfortunately came out with it but like you know we're we go to work you know what i mean still so it could have happened but the next day i took a test me and my girlfriend we were negative so yeah you know but the same thing her um uh, my girlfriend's brother-in-law he took two tests a rapid it was negative then he took a regular and then it was it was uh not you know what i mean so it was it was negative i mean positive so yeah you know, who knows you know what i mean like from one day to the next if you're going it's to work you can be you know yeah, and I got to say, I've also been fortunate. Like my doc, I let my doc, my primary care physician know, and they've been staying in touch with me. Um, you know, to making sure that I know to contact them if I have any questions. But one question I had for them that a lot of people have been asking me, and I was very curious on my own was, okay, I'm fully vaccinated. I got COVID. Obviously, um, at some point, I'm going to test negative, and I'll have the antibodies. Right. Do I need to get a different vaccine mm. like th two months from now or whatever? Yeah. And what they told, what they honestly told me was, we don't know yet. Yeah. You know, we don't, we, we right. know you're going to have antibodies, but we don't know if it's the right thing to then get like a different brand or like a second set of vaccine shots. Right. And, and they said, we're mm -hmm. just going to let you know. I mean, we have you on a list basically. Yeah. And as soon as we get information that states to do something different, we'll let you know. It's just, it's a really interesting thing um, in the sense that this is so new and, and how we treat it, how we go about fighting it moving forward. We're all still just learning, you know? Yeah, man, totally, totally. You know, I mean, we've, we've all seen, I mean, you know, it's a, a simple man's example but you know we've all seen movies and stuff like this where you know i mean it's like starts out one way and then it's like things change and you do learn about it you know what i mean yeah you know previous you know uh pandemic same thing man but um alfred i want you to know man 
the Just Another Friday Night uh, podcast and the Friday Nighters, the Friday Night Faithful, we're praying for you. I I'm appreciate ready, that. I want you guys to get better, man, yeah. uh, as soon as you can. Yeah. But before you go, and I, I want you to go rest, but but tell us a little bit about Collector's Cove and the things that you're doing in the world of, of pop culture and comic books, man, because that stuff sure. is super exciting. That's our world, man. That's, totally. That's, 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 that's how we met. The fun stuff, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I didn't want to just talk about the COVID. No, the whole no, time. no. You're totally um, fine, man. So, yeah, um, actually, the whole the whole thing about Collector's Cove, now, I've been doing it in one capacity or another for several years. But in prior years, I did a lot of the convention circuit, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of, like, the different cons in and around Texas, I would set up as a vendor with a booth and, you know, get to meet all these cool people. And that's really, and we've talked about this, uh, CM, that we've talked about this, like, it's all about meeting other fans. Like, that yeah. is so much the fun of it. And so I loved doing that. But obviously the pandemic hit. My next three shows got canceled, right. uh, which was like in March of last year. And then so then we I mean, I knew it was going to be a lost year in that sense. So I had to try to pivot. I had to try to think of like, well, how can I facilitate the, the kind of a con experience where I'm interacting with people, where I'm still able to to get people new books, exclusives and things that I pick up and share with everybody. And I did I did a ton of research. I actually saw somebody do a video with like um kind of like uh like your wife, Manly the jewelry. Oh yeah, yeah. That was Definitely. that was the first video I ever saw <clears throat> was somebody selling jewelry live on Facebook. And I was like, huh. And then so then <laughs> I saw I, you know, I saw people doing it with um sports cards, right, and comic books right. and, and all sorts of stuff. So I was like, well, let me try my hand at that. And I, I mean, I literally did so much research and I had a whole notebook full, like this thick, <laughs> just full of notes and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I, I was just like, well, here's here's what, how I'm, how I'm going to do it. And we're, I think, 38 deep now with the Collector's Cove wow. Live Auctions. And okay. um, as soon as I get over this COVID thing and I get a negative result, I'm going to be right back at it. You know, uh, awesome, I've missed man. it. I've missed doing them. Um, the other cool thing, and uh, I do want to say this because I'm very proud of this, is that the, one of the biggest reasons why I do continue to do it is that I decided early on, well, literally from the first show, that there's always going to be a charity component uh, to the Collector's yes. Cove of Auctions. I love that. Thank you. Um, so I always wanted to give back to the community. My mom instilled that in me at a very young age. So every every live auction either a percentage of the total proceeds or there'll be specific items where a hundred percent of the proceeds are going to go to a various charities, both locally, but also nationally. Yeah. And Great. in 2020, uh, you know, we were able to raise over $2,500. Dude. Awesome, man. That's, awesome. That's really awesome. That's brilliant. Fantastic stuff, Alfred. Fantastic yeah. stuff, man. So, so let me ask you this, uh, like, like what I, I just caught the kind of, tail end of what y'all were talking about but like have you seen the suicide squad yet have, yeah yeah we you, we watched it did you see it at home or did you watch it in a the movie theater so i <laughs> it was kind of before things like i mean i know this it just came out or whatever but really we right. kind of really weren't hearing that that much about delta yet or whatever but right. i went to the theater but our theater was almost empty there's yeah. a local one here on the south side where we go uh, yeah. i have a buddy that doesn't really go anywhere uh except to just work at home and mm -hmm. uh, he was like, you want to go to a movie? And he quit drinking and all that. So we don't ever hang out. And I, we said, yeah, we'll go. So it was like me, him and my girlfriend in a row. Um, my, my two uh, friends I had on earlier, uh, John and Roxanne, they sat behind us. And then it was like an empty theater. Uh, right. So it was, a, it was a cool experience. Um, I, I did love seeing it in theater. You know, that experience. Yeah. Yeah pretty unmatched well, um you know but but then later on i watched it at home again because it was yeah, that good I watched it it's so good it's really fun it's uh so chris and i you know we do the comic book characters podcast we right. haven't done our suicide squad review yet but that's going to be the next episode mm -hmm. and um so you know i actually had started to feel sick um with like flu-like symptoms last monday mm -hmm. um all right what's today Today's Friday, Friday, of course. Friday, yeah. Friday. <laughs> so not not this past Monday, but the Monday before that, uh, which was the week that the Suicide Squad came out. And I had tickets for Lib, for my mom and my sister. My mom and I go to all the comic book movies. We awesome. have ever since Iron Man. And we, wow. you know, obviously, except for the pandemic, has, has you know, right. 
throwing a little bit of a wrench into it. But, but for the most part, we've seen like every superhero film together. My mom is a genuine fan that loves all that stuff. That's it's, which is really cool. So, but we, I had tickets, and like on on that Tuesday, I was already starting to feel so bad, and I got concerned to the point where I was like, I don't want to. One, I don't know if I feel well enough to go anyway, but I don't want to expose anyone. To, and even with the mask, even, right. you know, so I told my mom, like, hey, if you and Bianca want to go, you can go. But I'm going to cancel my ticket and Lib's ticket. And But she was just like, no, just, you know, just cancel it all. And whenever you're feeling better, we'll go see. Aww. And that's all to say that, like, no. I still want to see it in the movie theater if I can get a chance to. Because yeah. I think it's the kind of film that really benefits from it. Man, let me tell you, Alfred, and I said this before that, you know, I saw Black Widow at home and it was great, but I knew I, I felt some kind of way afterwards because I, I was like, I should have watched it in theater first because <laughs> I know I would have liked it a lot better. And because I did it that way and the, the first time I felt that way and I enjoyed it at home was, you know, Kong and Godzilla and it was fine at home. But I yeah. knew right away I was like, this would have been better at the theater, but it was still right. very good. But with Black Widow, I felt like I felt a little flat on it only because I didn't see it in theater first. I was like, I know I wouldn't have felt this way had I seen it on the big screen. So that was my absolutely. Own but but yeah, but Suicide Squad had definitely benefited in my mind since I went uh, first to the theater and I didn't have any expectations. And I just thought James Gunn did a great job. I, I completely agree. Um, the other thing that I think you touched on with the Black Widow, but kind of the Marvel experience in general. And I don't, you know, honestly, will it even be this year? I, probably not. I don't uh, know. Until yeah. we get. Until we get theaters completely full of people again, mm -hmm. where like you know when you saw Avengers: Infinity War or Avengers: Endgame, <laughs> and like when Cap like got millionaire, and the yeah. whole theater just screams like, no matter how good your home theater setup is, you're not going to be able to replicate that feeling, and yeah. right. and that's unfortunate for all of us. I can't wait till that's back to the norm, whenever mm -hmm. that. 100 percent, man 100 percent. I, I and i i couldn't agree with you more because not only did it take them all that time to build to that experience but thank goodness it happened when it happened you know in right game, and it yeah. wasn't drug out of because who knows you know we yeah. one year and later and who who knows what would have happened I, yeah. absolutely it's it's a it's a wild time we're living in we just have to try to stay on our toes adapt as best as we can remember to still live our lives but be safe you know that's all you can do yeah. Totally, man. Totally. Well, Alfred, man, I want to thank you so much for coming on in the midst of your, uh, you know, going through this, man. We're yeah. praying for you to get better. Take I care appreciate of yourself. it. Take care of your lady. Take care of that big cat, Cloud. <laughs> oh, Cloud, man. He's going to be a guest star in one of the future auctions. I know it. I cannot and wait, man. I got to show my sister him on the last one. The, this cat covers an entire comic book box. Of he's shit. so big. He, we call I call him the kingpin because he looks oh like <laughs> kingpin. He's so huge. Uh, but Emmy, it was a pleasure meeting you. So, yeah, man, thank, thank you so much for having me on. Here. And uh, yeah, tell everyone I said hi, Adam and, and everybody else. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll continue to watch the show, but you guys have a good time. Yeah. Thanks, Alfred. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Uh, get better, bro. We'll see you soon, okay? All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Guys, that was Alfred from The Collector's Cove, uh, also comic book, uh, comic book Characters Podcast. So much fun. A really well-spoken guy. Obviously, you guys see he has the gift of gab. He can talk uh, uh, like no one else. You know what I mean? So that's uh, always fun to hear someone that can I talk mean, like that. you have that gift. Too. <laughs> yeah, so I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, we got a few comments in. We want to send some new people uh, coming in too. And guys, Ooh. give me a second to check because um, I didn't get to do our break because uh, I didn't want to interrupt Alfred, whatever, but I'm going to get us back to recording here. Give me just a second here. Uh, guys, if you're listening on audio, sorry about that. If you want to hear the uncut, uh, full version of what Alfred had to say, check us out on YouTube.com. Search Just Another Friday Night. We're almost at 60 uh, subscribers, so we're trying to get our way up. But guys, let's get to some of these comments. Uh, number one, I want to address new people in the house. Uh, Erica in the house. Hello, Erica. Ooh, Welcome. Ooh, uh, <laughs> she says hi. And then, oh, and Erica says maybe a uh, close second to you, I think, in reference to the gift of gap. Thank you so much, Erica. <laughs> and guys, I want you to thank Erica for all the work that you're doing and all the posts that you're putting up in regards to what we're talking about in this crazy, crazy pandemic. So much education. Uh, I know people say don't get your knowledge from Facebook, but I feel like when I'm reading your posts i am 100 because you're so so many good sources and so much uh great information so love love that 
Um, David Lopez in the house says, what's up, gents? David, where you been, bro? Miss you, man. Glad that you're here joining tonight. Aaron B in the house. Aaron B says, what up, y'all? Sis is there, too, definitely. Crystal is here. Hi, Crystal. Appreciate you here. Audrey, what's up, Audrey? Uh, yes, I'm the gift she of knows. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I know. I, I did, That's why there's four-hour episodes, because I don't know how to shut up. Okay, I know, I know. Uh, guys, thank you all so much for being here with us on a special, uh, you know, our season three finale, our uh, ooh, episode... Ooh. Um, Episode 25 of this season, but technically episode 75, 75 episodes that we've done all together. Uh, Sean, great comments regarding uh, Cena as the Peacemaker. Cena was outstanding if you haven't seen it yet, <laughs> Sean. So, uh, well, <laughs> she has her own reasons for saying so. Well, maybe we'll talk a little Suicide Squad. Uh, but, yeah, guys, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, let me see uh, who else we got here. Uh, Joe is in the house. Joe says, what is up? Uh, Joe, I'm glad that you are hey, here, Joe. sir. Uh uh, Kara says, "Did we ever finish Sons of Anarchy?" So I think that question was for me because I know you never seen no. it. Yeah, um, I finally did. I, I did finish it uh, eventually, and I wasn't happy with the ending, but uh, I did finish it. So okay, all right. Did, Not happy with the ending. Again, like cross that one off. Cross one off the list. I already finished it. I, I tried to start it. I couldn't get into it, so I didn't stick with it. Maybe I need to go back. I'm. I'm yeah, trying to... I mean, really, you have to. I don't know if that's really up your alley, to be honest. I okay, mean, I know you kind of give things a chance. I mean, I loved Breaking Bad, and I felt like it was in that vein of, like, Maybe. realistic stuff. That might be the one show that got you. Maybe so. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I love Breaking in Bad, but I did genre. not love, well, I just saw that first episode. I don't know. It was just, like, it just, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I need to give it another chance. I was, I would, it was, it's, it's definitely, like, a drama show, uh, dramatic, yeah. uh, family. It's all about, like, family, the motorcycle club family. Right, so, right, right, I mean, yeah. And I heard, I know, I like that. that Charlie Hunnam. I know he's great, and I know Ron oh, Perlman's in he's, it. He's so. a great actor. Yeah. I think he he did an amazing job, uh, and of course Ron Perlman. We use Ron Perlman. I love him. Yes, um, he played. Uh, I mean, he's he's excellent too, and everything. You know, I, I love Hellboy, and Excuse he's me. my Hellboy. Jesus, so. That's not a gift to gab, and then I burp. It's <laughs> disgusting. So yeah, uh, Jason says, lady "What is going on this weekend, Jason? I believe there's the Hill Country Comic Con going on, man. But to be honest with you, I don't know if it's such a good idea. I for wanted to go. To go. I wanted out. to take my son, and you mm -hmm. know, then my mom got COVID, yeah. and then it." It doesn't get that much more close to home when it's in your home. In your so house, yeah. We happen we to all live like, together, so we're just gonna have to wait it out. Yeah, man. So, uh, I, other than that, Jason, I don't really know um, anything in particular going on. I haven't even heard Traders Village having anything. If anything, I'm seeing things get canceled. Uh, guys, I'm just going through you guys' comments here now, putting them up on the board so you guys uh, get a chance to see those comments. We do love that you guys are here and hanging out with us. Uh, and again, especially some like new people. What the heck? You guys never get on. Who shared it? Who shared it? I appreciate. Well, thank you guys for getting there. on, because yeah, because we're doing like a free people. form tonight. We're doing like right. there's no topic. It's just we're just gonna you know gab and and, and shoot that. Uh, Joe just, says he's live from Marshall. <laughs> live from school shopping. <laughs> Very nice. Go Joe. Go Joe. <laughs> Excuse me. And then Kara says the biker brotherhood. <laughs> uh yeah we did a little bit of shoe shopping the other day joe and i was like <laughs> wow ross was like cleaned out and then i was with my girlfriend at i forgot where walmart or something like, yeah. no where were we at we were like at like jc penny and there was like mm -hmm. no shirt so i was like are the shirts just sold down like only like four x's and she's like it's back to school i, was I like, think i kind of lucked oh, out because yeah. i really didn't have to do a lot of uh, clothes shopping for for my yeah. son so yeah. erica says i came for amy yeah she says she's she is our main attraction tonight mm -hmm. i rarely get mm -hmm. uh yeah, I get people, don't come for me i do this every friday nobody comes no? for me erica so yeah uh <laughs> <clears throat> yeah okay so uh good stuff here guys uh in the comments and again let me see what we got going on um uh, here what are you guys out there in the uh friday night faithful watching right now what uh is there something in pop culture is there a movie we just talked a little bit about the suicide spot so let's get let me get let's start there since you like uh well before i get that let me get joe here joe wants to say go to threeleggedcom for all your back to school shopping yes definitely you can pick up this shirt there at threeleggedrabbit.com as ooh, well as ooh, shirts from ooh. joe's podcast now watch this including one with his face on it which he told me he's getting for all his kids the first day of school they're gonna wear their dads now watch oh, this podcast t-shirt i'm sure make sure you get pictures it. joe <laughs> we want to see them. Yeah, I, I doubt Joe's uh, superstar uh, kids in baseball are going to be wearing. They're like skirt. They might wear it when they get off the car, <laughs> and they're going to be like, "This yeah. is going right in the locker." Yeah, right real there. shirts underneath. You know, hey, bro, let them wear what they do in the workouts, bro. And they're doing them two a days. You know what I mean? So, uh, guys, do go check out the now watch this podcast if you haven't checked it out already. What are some other comments here since we got? Uh, <laughs> Kara says it's Friday the Thirteenth. Where's the murder and mayhem? Oh, I know. Well, yeah, we did get told here. that. We did, get, we did get told about that. Um, 
don't know. This is what's your favorite horror movie? You got a favorite horror movie? Oh, you know, I was scared of uh, Chucky for the longest time, the longest time. But I really, uh, actually, in, the, in the more recent years, I really got into Michael Myers a lot. Like I wanted to watch uh, all of the, um, all of his movies. I wanted to watch all of those, and I think I did, except for one of them. Uh, one of the cheesy ones that everybody was like, you don't got to watch that one. That was horrible. <laughs> I can't remember which one it was, but I really got into it. I even, Kara even dragged me to go see um, the last one that came out. Which one was that? I think it was, it called, what was it called, Kara? Halloween? The These are the ones being done by Rob Zombie, right? No, this one, the last one wasn't done with where uh, his sister's already older and he's in prison. But Jamie Lee Curtis comes out, right? Yeah, she comes out in that one. And she I'm, she I'm has a daughter, I think. I'm behind on this. I can't remember, Kara. But they're coming out with another one because it, well, you know, I don't want to Halloween know kills, like that, like that. Something, I yeah. Uh, Kara made me go to the last one. And I liked it. And then I wanted to watch all of them because I hadn't really seen all of them all the way through. And I really, like, love them. So uh, probably those. I think the Michael Myers, uh, I don't know if I'm going to call it a trilogy. Would that be would that be a trilogy, y'all? Yeah, if it's three, yeah. It's well, three it's more than three. He's got like seventeen. <laughs> interesting, interesting. <laughs> What's your favorite scary movie? That's that you line know, is from I a don't, movie. I don't, I know, <laughs> I don't know that if it's truly scary because I love Creep Show Two. Creep Show Two is like see, and like those are like stories faves. in. Right? Yeah, I, well, I love anthologies because it's okay. like a it's like a, a, a short. You know what I mean? Well, see, and, and I, I and, like uh, the Creep Show Two. You know, like what is it, the raft you know. and. Uh, my favorite one is the one with the Indian. Uh, oh yeah, I, that's my very yeah, favorite. That's uh, probably Old my Chief favorite Woodenhead. one. Yeah. Old Chief Woodenhead. Old Chief Woodenhead. Yeah. Let so. me answer this message real quick. So go ahead, sis. Oh, sis, you know what? Take care of comments for me. Read what we got going on here. Use the mouse if you need to. Okay. So uh, let's see. After Kara says, "Where's the murder mayhem?" We have Joe Martinez that says, "I wish they would." Um, oh, where are the shirts? For the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my lovely Miss Erica says maybe y'all could touch on difference between comic strips, comic Let's con, uh, graphic novels, and comic books. Perry made fun of me because I compared comic strips, comic strips to comic books. Perry was right to do so, Erica. I cannot believe you know that what? that even happened. But uh... <laughs> punch America <clears throat> right in the gut. <laughs> um. But okay, that's so a good let's, thing yeah, because uh, even though, like, I consider myself a part of the comic book world, a nerd, I'm not as uh, versed as, like, my brother and my cousin Adam, which is double uh, A. Yeah, double A is the true. Because, see, when I was right. with you, I don't really know how to answer that question because to me, comic books are kind of maybe. I, I wouldn't want to, want to say birthed out of comic strips because comic strips were distributed to newspaper and it was like a short three, four panel right. tale. You know what I and mean? And really, you know? a comic book to me is just like, way more panels yeah we want to read is. it yeah. individually it's right. not like a book where you're reading right. i think what happened reading. is maybe like you know and again this is how little and i'm sure double a were he here uh uh and if joe was here joe would also say from now watch this would say if adam was there he'd know <laughs> and he you know it was like you know there was probably <laughs> that in the in the uh, newspaper and the funnies i would imagine and the kids were like man i really like this and the newspapers were like we could sell a whole bunch of this, whatever. Whoever those creators were, guys like Stanley, because Superman had a comic strip, Spider Man had a comic strip. Right. So I was like, man, why don't we just put a whole bunch of and these? And it's funny because like my kid and like like Erica's kid mm -hmm. and Kara's kid probably have never even seen a comic strip, yeah. like in the newspaper. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. So, well, I mean, newspaper. I mean, now uh, physical like media is becoming a thing of the past. Right. You know what and I mean? Kello like, more recently has gotten into comic books, so he knows what the panels look like. But if I were to show him a comic strip in a newspaper, he probably would be like, why is it so short? Right. Like, right. Those are the kind of questions and the things that he says because he's... I can remember when I would like <laughs> see the jokes, the the, the comic, and not really a comic strip, but like the cartoon. They just call it the cartoon, like from the New Yorker. And I'd be like, I don't get it because I was like, you know, too young. <laughs> And then later on, I was like, oh, I see why it was funny at that time. Right. You know what I mean? So I guess I would just say the difference is it's like, you know, it's a it's a more contained story in newspaper format. Um, there are still physical newspapers you can buy. They still do have a funny section. I believe in Sundays. Yeah. I don't know if it's at all of them. Erica whatever, mentioned but... the, yeah, on Sundays. I think it's in, in other days as well, but mm -hmm. I think you get more of the funny pages. The yeah. Comic, uh, yeah. Strips in Sunday paper. And but 
so then Comic Con, uh, Erica is a, is a comic book convention. So where you guys can go meet and and you know what this isn't this is a really great question because you know my my girlfriend's kids at first didn't really know what was what and even I didn't know until I went to my first uh, big con in Austin, mm -hmm. uh, Wizard World because I had only been to like what they call like a show like a comic toy show here and it's like it's like a flea market like a bunch of vendors selling stuff. There's nobody really there, no celebrities, no big artists. But when I went to that Wizard World Comic Con, I mean I, my hair was blown back, man. Thanks to uh, Bobby and Gary at Toy Matrix, man. They took me to that free of charge. I got to go in. I helped them set up and they were very uh, understanding. It was my first time they let me go <laughs> run amok and I did and I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, this is so vastly different than anything I'd ever been to. And then like the year later, we got Alamo City Comic Con here in San Antonio, which was amazing right. uh, at the time. And like, I think they, I went, I know I went a couple of times and did those before I even had and We met Stan Lee at one. Yeah. Right. And those ones are really awesome because at the Comic Cons, people do a lot of cosplay. So you mm -hmm. actually get to see characters right. from comic books and movies and shows. Yeah. Uh, people dressed up as those characters. And that's really awesome because you can take pictures with them. And, you know, they like that attention because they work really hard on those uh, cosplay outfits and their costumes and uh, lots of time and effort. And so that's a really neat aspect. And that's one of the ones I really would love to take Kal L to. Mm -hmm. But, because of the whole pandemic thing like that's not possible oh, right shoot. now but hopefully in the future that'll be something that we can we can take him to because i know that he would just absolutely love that yeah yeah and i i would say anybody that bothered to want to go listen you go listen to our uh, me and double a's episode uh wrath of con uh c-o-n <laughs> where we talk about our comic book convention experiences because mm -hmm. there are a lot of things people don't know people are like oh you pay to get in do you get all the autographs for free it's like no you no. don't you know what i mean it's like the picture and the autograph cost separate and they're expensive it's not cheap you know what i mean so it's like you know um we just had a big con that was scheduled to be here it was going to have you know star wars uh royalty you know what i mean ewan mcgregor obi-wan kenobi and uh hayden christensen anakin skywalker uh and then we were also going to have luke wilson who's huge off the loki show as mobius mm -hmm. um but those three actors canceled because of this rise in delta and then that got to keep coming back to that but um big, and when they those three canceled the whole con got canceled because the promoter said this is what mainly people had we had sold tickets for people have right. bought for yes you paid three. to come in but then they also paid for that and i can tell you guys right now just for the picture with uh ewan mcgregor uh it was like $225. Mm -hmm. It's that, and then it's like $225 for his And sometimes so. you can kind of, if you're not willing to pay that, you can get a glimpse of them, you know, depending on how well they're uh, exposed. But yeah. um, sometimes that's enough for me. My brother is more the type where he actually wants to shake their hand and take the picture with them, which, of course, that's so awesome. I mean, I got to meet Stan Lee because of you. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't help you pay for that. You did that on your yeah. own. and. And I had the privilege uh, and the honor of actually getting to stand next to Rest in uh, peace, Stan. Rest a peace. magnificent man. So for sure, man, what well, probably one of my all time favorite creators uh, in any genre. Um, but uh, yeah, but see, the cool thing is, is like if you do have a partner, like I've gone with, you know, Albert, Friday Night Albert Olivares, who does our intro music on the audio version before. And I've gone with uh, some of his friends, uh, Cindy and Vic, and we'll split a picture. So the picture right. might be $100, but we all just put in 25 right. and, you know, Which I think is the best way together. to do but, that. Yeah, it's you, great. Yeah. It was really great. We met Shannon Elizabeth that way. We met, uh, we met you know, Jason Mewes and all that. And oh, some yeah. of those, some of the people that maybe less known celebrities, you know what I mean, are, are you know, not as expensive so it's a and much Jason better used let us take pictures oh yeah he, he was, was totally like, cool man go ahead he yeah. was posing and i love i love wrestling and some of the wrestlers are super nice they just let you like take pictures for free whatever yeah. it's cool um, but, um no good 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 question Erica. and then I, oh graphic novels so graphic novel was like a collected edition so most of the times a, a comic book series could have like it could just be going forever right like spider-man right but there's stories within like a story might be about like yeah. him versus dr octopus or whatever for six issues so they'll collect that into one novelization and so it's like you a know big book. yeah just like a big book you call it like the the dr octopus saga or whatever and that's that's uh that would be considered a graphic novel and so oftentimes they're released that way first it comes out that way it's like a, just a bigger novelization of several comic books into one whatever but a lot of mine and double a's favorites were single issues or whatever but if you're like oh, i can't find it but everyone talks about it you know the dark knight returns kingdom come you can get um yeah a whole i think it's the same space <laughs> yeah i like it better too because i don't have Instead to dig through my you know, boxes 13 and, individual comics you, know. you have just the one graphic novel which plus they become collectible so you don't want your individual right. issues to be getting like right a, a, what we call it becoming a reader copy where it gets a lot of reading opening closing mm -hmm. that that is hard on the comic book and the oil is in your hands and things like that so you buy a graphic novel and you can just kind of read it all the time those I think those may go up in value, some of them, like the first edition or whatever, but very rarely, you know what I mean? It's going to be whatever it costs on the cover. So 
great, super great. And lots Thank of you, Erica. Uh, question. Yeah, good question. And then Erica also said regarding um, pop culture stuff, uh, we just finished The Servant Creepy AF. So uh, I, heard of, I have heard of The Servant. It's Netflix, Erica, if you're still out there okay. with us, let me know. And Netflix is doing it right now, man. <laughs> oh, They're yeah, putting man. out some good stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, was it HBO Max too? I guess, I mean, just because like, I don't know. I guess people are not doing cable anymore. We aren't. So no, totally, <laughs> totally. Uh, let me take this one real quick over here. Uh, let's see who's this in here. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Roxanne is commenting here. She says, uh, Stucci Boochies would have loved that. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that's Sean. Sean, sorry. I thought that was Roxanne. Sean says, yeah. She, Sean, it was very cool, man. You definitely would have dug it, man. Uh, Got to do that next time when hopefully things are better. Kara also says, uh, Halloween movies, Rob Zombie ones. Which yeah, I didn't really care for the that. Rob Zombie ones, but that's just me. Okay. And Joe from Now Watch This says, I'm going to get a Jason movie in tonight. <laughs> uh, he also says, Halloween form might be my favorite. Uh, yeah, you have to go. Okay. Pop out real quick. I'll be back, guys. Uh, all right, guys. I'm going to be flying here. So, you know what? I'm going to bring the holds back in with me while Amy takes care of some business if they're ready. Uh, let me see here. Foxy Roxy, John, you guys there with me? Oh, I'm ready, brother. All Here's right. You guys, Amy had to pop out real quick, which I figured might happen or whatever. I need to refresh my drink as well. Uh, let me read some of these comments here, though, guys, as we go through. Roxanne, if you care to comment on any of these, uh, let me know. So uh, Roxanne, had, uh, Joe said Halloween 4 might be his favorite. What do you guys think? I like – oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Halloween 2 is one of my favorites. I'm actually a part three myself. I like the season of the witch. Or is it season of the witch? The one where – He's not in it. Right. I like the masks. I like the kids with the masks and the whole, uh, uh, the countdown to Halloween and, you know, that kind of thing. That guy from Robocop's in it, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> John likes the Halloween without Michael Myers. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, because originally he said about the stories, right? Halloween stories. Jason, you know, I mean, yeah, uh, Jason. That, Michael was, Myers that was the original concept where it was supposed to be. Michael Myers was going to die. Then they were going to go another Halloween theme and another Halloween theme. And we probably yeah. would have gotten all the way to Halloween aliens or something like that. But yeah, they, people loved Michael Myers too much. Mm -hmm. I'm there for it. I'm there for mm -hmm. it. We also have here, uh, Kara says, showgirls, absolutely terrifying. I, I disagree. Love I hey, love it. Well, that was amazing. Movie. I don't know why, yeah. but I adore that movie. Hey, <laughs> oh. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what is the name of the guy that he was also in Sex, Sex in the City? Kyle McLaughlin. Kyle McLaughlin, who I love, and it, 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 which you have yet to see. Which movie? Dune. Dune, right? But and I will watch you Dune. Gotta watch that one before you watch the new one. Yeah, for sure. I think so too. We gotta, we gotta. When things are okay, we have a viewing or whatever. But um, uh, you guys gotta see Kyle McLaughlin in Portlandia as the mayor of Portland. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, you know what? Shannon, um, but Shannon Palomo loves him in um, Twin Peaks. Oh, okay. He's got a pretty uh, hearty career there. That guy. Oh yeah, yeah. You know I mean? He should do the con circuit. Uh, my good friend I, I'd, be, Audrey, I'd be in his line. Yeah, I would go too. Uh, my good friend Audrey says the new Candyman is coming out. That's right. We got to see the trailer, guys. Right when we were at Suicide Squad or old. I think it was old. I think it was old. Yeah. Okay. And what did you guys but, think? Are you guys there for it? I'm I'm there for it. I and you know what's funny? I did not watch Candyman in the nineties. I just watched it last year. Really? You know what? I've not seen it the whole way through, but I love Tony Todd as Scareglow in Mash of the Universe Revelation. He killed it, man. Totally yeah. killed it. Yeah. Uh let's see here. Erica says you I'm know? laughing out loud. What's up, John? Well, I was going to say, uh, lately we've been watching that uh, American Horror Story Stories. The story. Oh, right. It's stories. like an anthology version, right? Well, it's it's multiple episodes of different different stories. Okay. That's actually pretty good. I, I, I kind of like that because I don't have to like, oh, what happened on episode two? I can go back and watch. Like, they're all individual. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I need to check it out. Is it on Netflix or? Uh, Hulu. 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 Okay. Okay, I'll check it out on Hulu then. You get a free subscription if you have a Spotify subscription. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. And then Erica, she's laughing. Uh, Kara says, uh, "The new Halloween was called the new Halloween was called Halloween that came out in 2018." Okay, and that yeah. is that the Rob Zombie one, Rocks and John. No, this is the one where they did a whole reboot, I believe. Okay. Uh, with Jamie Lee Curtis coming back. 
Okay, so she comes as back. As Laurie Strode, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, cool. And then they're going to make that a sequel to that one, so. Yeah, and then Jason just follows up and asks, have y'all seen Candyman yet? Uh, <clears throat> I don't think the new one is out, Jason, but, you know, uh, like we just said, Roxanne barely saw the original, and I don't think I've really seen the original the entire way through. It was one of those movies, like, it would be on, I'd see parts of it, and I'd get distracted and not see all of it, but. But I yeah. really enjoyed Candyman a lot that I want to be him as a costume from a, one of my 31 days of Halloween. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I would like to see that, Roxanne. You always put a good twist on him, so I would love to see how that turns out. Yeah, he's a Rambo. A good Rambo. Rambo. I do, yeah. Again, at, at Roxanne's uh, Instagram, guys, go check it out. Let me bring up the uh, the Instagram real quick here. Oh, where am I at? There we go. At Madam Roxanne on Instagram, yeah. guys. You check that out. I, you'll see my Rambo costume, my Weird Al Yankovic costume. <laughs> yeah. was awesome. uh, Kara says the next one is going to be called Halloween Kills. So I guess we were right about that. That's kind of a weird name. How does Halloween yeah, Kills? So. Okay. I'm going to turn the TV down. We have Friday, Friday 13th. Okay. We have Friday 13th. Four <laughs> in the background. No, that's all. <clears throat> that's all good. Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> I've got this dry cough from my allergies, too. So excuse me. COVID. <clears throat> I know. Uh, Roxanne says Get Out was a great horror flick. I agree. I liked Get Out. It was fun. I really, I really <clears throat> liked Get Out. But it's so funny. When I watched Get Out, I had an, a different idea of what it was. So. When the ending came about, I'm like, oh, that was it. So I almost felt like what I had in my head was a little bit better. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you got to let us know what that is then. Uh, Joe says, love seeing cosplays at cons. Totally agree, Ooh. Joe. That's like to dress up all the time. But, you know, I never really do characters. I like, <clears throat> well, I call myself, instead of a cosplayer, I call myself more like a costumer because I'm like, I'm not a specific pirate. I'm a pirate, you know? Right. right. I dig it. Yeah. I did that. I like that. Uh, Steve says, Chuck, which is the, which con is best to go to? Um, All know, of them. It depends yeah, on what you're looking for, right? Yeah, I would say it does depend on what you're looking for. Like right now, the next one coming is that big Texas uh, con that's going to be at the Henry B. I think that's going to be a good one to go to. Um, and again, you're, you're right, though, John. It depends on what you're looking for. Do you want celebrities? Do you want to see people dressed up? Do you want? Are you looking for artists and comic books? That, like this one that was going to be in the Hill Country this weekend, it didn't have – it wasn't going to have, like, any big-name celebrities. It wasn't going to have any big uh, – even really artists or whatever. It would be a chance. Like, they were going to do comic book grading there. They were going to have, um, you know, some, like, voice actors. And then, of course, you know, if you're going to go check out the, the merch to buy, you know what I mean? It would have had that stuff there, too. But um, – you know, at that one they were going to have that was going to be at Six Flags or Celebrity Fan Fest, that was going to have everything. Like, it was going to have, you know, well, not everything. I'm sure they were going to have vendors, but you were mainly going for the celebrities, big-time celebrities there. So, uh, but at this big Texas con, I think you're going to get a good blend. I think, like, maybe, I think maybe Ron Perlman was going to be there. He's supposed to be, like, maybe the biggest name. Um, but it's, that's that's the extent of of celeb wise like, like good people but not you know great but you're going to also get a good mix of vendors and things like that and i haven't heard any big comic book artists or writer names but i'm imagining that would be a good one to go to um, also. So it really depends what you're looking you for gotta put, you gotta put them up <laughs> that's all right it's all right you guys do it you got our pizza <laughs> yeah. oh you want me to i can pop you guys back out amy's back okay yeah okay all right we'll Thanks. see y'all a little bit later all right, guys, thanks again to John and Roxanne for coming in. Uh, Clutch helped me out there. Amy had to step out for a minute. Erica also says, I'm pretty sure I know more than Perry now. We are always here for you, Erica. You I think you always knowledge? did, Erica. <laughs> no, nah, I love Perry. He's a good guy. Uh, I don't remember the platform. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, yeah, M. Night Shyamalan is great. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I missed anything. There. I know I'm behind on the comments, so I'm trying to catch up. Uh, <clears throat> Snooch to the Nooch from Joe. Uh, John says, I cut the cable cord a long time ago. Totally. Uh, Jess says, boo, Rob Zombie is the shizzle. Agree out. You know, I mean, Rob Zombie. I, I couldn't get in it. He's it. got some. He's got some stuff. He's got some stuff. Uh, Erica says the servant is on Apple TV. Okay, so that's. I've been thinking about getting that. I think it's five bucks a month, and I really want to see Ted Lasso. Uh, it's a show that I've been hearing a lot okay. of rave, rave stuff about, and I think Tom Hanks has a show on there too. I think. Um, Joe says uh, the lead in in three was great. Uh, oh, in uh, Halloween. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Kara says, uh, Roxy and John should dress up like Rob Zombie and Sherry Moon Zombie. Hey, that would be legit. <laughs> That's a good suggestion uh, for the Holtz there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Anne says, gorgeous Roxy. Uh, Chelsea says, hi. Woo. And then Chelsea does like a face like this. 
That's the emoji face. And then and says, Amy, <laughs> what about why, why not gorgeous Chuck? What's up with that, Ann? No, on, man. I don't, Come on, play. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, what else? Have we got anything else in there? Um, let's see if she gets scrolled down. Yes, yeah, I think. Yeah, oh, I think Ann was We're the at the bottom. One. Okay, great. Right All right, now. great. All right, guys, and I have I have a few more guests I want to come in or whatever. I'm waiting on on some. We're trying to talk a little bit about everything. It's our variety show. Um, and we're only in our second block. You know, me and A do me and Double A do like four, five blocks. Sometimes. Oh, we know, we know. So yeah. Oh, then there goes Aunt Chuck. Thanks, Ann. Appreciate it. Uh, good. That, uh, you see, you glad that you're here. <clears throat> and John says we are both beautiful. Yeah, I had to get a new beer, man. Did everything go okay? You had to step away. Everything was fine. My Everything's dog good. was she was growling Dogs at me. Dogs are tripping. I know we're out here in my living room. This is not our normal setup, obviously. And again, no mics, no headphones. So, uh, you know, I mean, we're trying to do our best. And I got to remember to go check our our recording uh, part so I can get uh get that portion in or whatever. But um. Yeah, so uh, good on that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, okay. I got some people popping back into the stream. All right, guys, give me a second here uh, to check something. Uh, and then I'm going to bring you guys a new guest uh, here that is a really fun guy, guy that um, uh, we met, again, through podcasting, me and Double A. And we got to be a guest on his show, and I've been wanting to bring him on for a long time. But I really wanted to bring him on at Christmas time, <clears throat> but I hadn't had an opportunity to do so. Um, but you know what I mean? There's still time because Christmas isn't here yet, so we'll see. It will be. Uh, Jerry, can you hear me okay? Okay, you ready? You ready? I'm gonna, Let's I'm do gonna it. Bring it. Let's do it. There he is, guys. This is Jerry D. Jerry Davila from the Totally Rad Christmas Podcast. Uh, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Jerry, uh, this is my sister Amy. Jerry, hey, how's Hello, it going? Jerry. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, man. Double A is not here, man, because we're we're each quarantined right now. Uh, <laughs> him has his thing going on, and we have a, a mom with it or whatever. And uh, right, everyone yeah. feels good, though. Everyone feels That's good. good. Everyone's vaccinated, but you know, positive that, tests mean you got to be quarantined. So. You got to be. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Hear you. <clears throat> Jerry, tell us a little bit about. Okay, first of all, we met through Joe Martinez. Now, right. of the, yeah. now watch this podcast. That's uh, right. Like, yeah, you got to hear this pod. You got to hear this pod. It's so much, so great. It's so fun. And he was totally right. And uh, your show is really unique because number one, uh, <laughs> and there it goes, Joe commenting. He puts on there. I don't know if you can see the comments. The one and only great Jerry D. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when it. <laughs> You know, Joe is the is the ultimate fan, is he not, Jerry? Like, I need he a totally is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Joe, he's a good guy, and I've been meaning I'm trying to get him and Lucky on, and I've been trying since May, and like yeah. one thing after another, just haven't been able to get uh, get him on again. But uh, well, you know, hopefully, been, I can work it out. They've been in your genre, man. They've been they've been sneaking around the 80s, and we did I know. last week, so you know. <laughs> um, but Jerry, tell us about Totally Rad Christmas, man. Like your show is unique. Number one, I didn't know that there were just Christmas podcasts, but you take it a step further. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it's it's funny. Yeah. Like you said, we talk about all things Christmas in the 80s, uh, toys, movies, specials, music, uh, books, fashion, fads. Uh, I like to say if it was gnarly during Christmas in the 80s, we got it covered. I know. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> you know? You know, um, and it's just something that uh, I was a guest on a show um, uh, one time, a, a, a show called Tis the Podcast. It's one of those mm -hmm. Christmas podcasts you were talking about. <laughs> and uh, after I was done, uh, another Christmas podcaster named Todd uh, Killian, who does Christmas Clatter, was like, hey, that was fun. You should you should have your own show. And I was like, ah, whatever. And uh, <laughs> you, you know how it goes. Um, but then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, OK, maybe I maybe I would. And I was just trying to think, what could I do? And I love Christmas. I mean, I work at a Christmas store. You can, you can I see it there. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. uh, <laughs> oh, it's, it's fun. It, I mean, it's hard to be it's hard to not be happy when you're in like a place <laughs> just full of lights and, you know, stuff like right? that. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was like, yeah, I guess I could do a Christmas one. And I love the 80s. Like, I'm always talking with my friends about, like, Thundercats and Transformers and G.I. Joe and Voltron and Mask and, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. So I was like, I got to do something 80s. So I was like, let's combine the two. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it just kind of grew from there. Uh, I had the theme song 
uh, a few months before I actually had the the show. It was just something in my head that I I was literally driving home and I had to like pull over into a, a library parking lot and I just kind of sung it into my phone real quick and um, you know <laughs> that kind of thing. You sing the you sing the intro. That's me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh my yeah. gosh, it's so good. <laughs> Joe told me he goes, "You're going to be humming the theme song in a couple of days." I said, "I'm listening." Through Jerry's episodes, because you know we were going to be on. You'd asked us to be on, right? It was super nice of you and awesome. Which you. I got to get you on again, by the way. Oh man, I cannot wait, man. Uh, we were on the Thundercats episode, okay. uh, and Jerry just. I haven't made it that far yet in the show, but I will get there. Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> I hear that on Jerry's on Jerry's show. Oh, I think you might have. Uh... I probably sent you the link. Yeah, I was okay. probably giving you. I'm not sending it to you again, but uh, <laughs> she's trying to catch up on our episodes. Yeah, <laughs> nice. But uh, I heard Jerry do "Who's the Boss," Gremlins, and I was just <laughs> like dying laughing, Gremlins. and it's so fun. Fun and um, you know the intro is great and Jerry just has such a really tight show and he's such a, a good podcaster like it's just like oh it's easy to listen I see why Joe was raving um, but, <laughs> well thank you <laughs> yeah, and Jerry the consummate host man it was perfect when we got on together and we did it and we talked Thundercats and uh, I felt like you and Double A even got into some deep water where I was like uh oh I'll get that I'll get it going a little bit but dude I love uh, to hear you um, uh, talk about that stuff man and, and so why, why the 80s jerry you're a child of the 80s i assume like myself and I, my sister. I am yeah uh, i was born in 1980 and okay. uh, just everything i know was you know growing up in like those those formative years was just you know 80s man you know mtv still showed videos uh you know that kind of thing so <laughs> uh That's but the great. 80s had like awesome stuff like the terminator and commando and predator and other movies without arnold schwarzenegger oh yeah and uh yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's just like everything about it was so cool, so much neon. Uh, I mean, it's just, it was fun. And I love the 90s too, don't get me wrong. I mean, I was a teenager in the 90s, so of course I, I really liked them. But just something about the 80s and like like growing up and like uh, my mom would, would make like chorizo tacos and then just like sitting in front of the TV watching, you know, the, the cartoons on Saturday morning and uh, renting Nintendo games from like our local video store. I mean, that was like it, man, you know, and then you'd go yeah. watch like, like the Ninja Turtles cartoon. I mean, yeah. it was, oh, it was okay. awesome. Oh my so gosh. I was like, Everything. if I'm going to do something uh, podcasty, it's definitely got to have the eighties in some way. It um, Cause it's, that's my childhood, you know? So if I yeah. can bring anyone back to like their childhood, even like just a little bit, uh, then I, I think it's a win, you know? Oh man, 100%. I mean, like I took a picture from my uh, Instagram during getting ready for your show. Cause I, you know, I, I like to do some research and prep a little bit. So I'm watching Thundercats off double A's Hulu and I got my bowl <laughs> of cereal on a Saturday morning. I was like, this is so, and I, and I kept telling Jerry, thank you. And so I said, thank you, man. Thank you for making me revisit this cartoon that I haven't seen since I was a kid. And it just yeah. hits you in the feels. And then the way too, you talk about, uh, you know, the, the subject matter, um, dude, literally the last show I was at here in town called Ekman's, uh, show, uh, comic cards and toy show, um, before things blew up again, I was there right. and I'm literally going through, uh, short boxes with a, a, a buddy of mine, Gabe. And I just kept seeing all these Christmas issues and I kept thinking about you. I was like, Oh, I bet <laughs> I know you and Anthony, right. Cause I see you guys so yeah. much. On I said, I bet they would like this. I wonder if they've read this. Like, I just kept thinking about it. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to end up, you know, having a stack here for these guys. But, um, you know, Jerry even did an episode with a few other podcasters. I forget their name, Jerry, but where you talked about the X-Men issue with Kitty Pye. Oh, yeah. The, uh, they're from the Caped Podcasters. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was so cool. Like, and they just talked about how it took place, like, right at Christmas. And then, mm -hmm. like, you know, what, you know, Kitty Pride was doing and she fought this monster. And, like, I was just, like, all <laughs> engaged. Like, I was like, dude, this is so good. And they made it so funny. They were talking about how the, you know, the what the characters were wearing and how they were drawn and the writer and the artist. <laughs> it's just a really fun podcast and it's not long like ours it's like jerry does like what like a tight hour right jerry i try to do about an hour yeah every <laughs> once in a while especially when my brother's on yeah. uh sometimes uh, i have to like cut it down to like an hour and a half but yeah. usually it's about an hour yeah yeah I, I know you're dadding too like like lucky and joe so it's like you know time is precious i know what you mean man so for sure. yeah yeah you gotta you gotta get it in as much as you can you know yeah uh, well jerry i don't want to uh take too much of your time man please plug away man uh whatever you'd like uh of course joe is here uh, singing your praises. He says, uh, <laughs> he says, we will soon Jerry regarding the episode. He says, best theme song in the business. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he's telling you, Jerry, we covered zap last, uh, last week's I, show. So check I it out. saw that. I, I saw that you, uh, you posted that on, uh, on social media and I was like, Oh, I got to check it out. So I can't <laughs> wait to hear that one. Cause I remember that movie. 
Yeah, <laughs> dude, dude, he's talking, uh, and and it's... I did not remember that movie. I was like, whoa, okay, something out of my depth. You know what I mean? And I'm 81, so it was like, <laughs> okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're all about there. <laughs> I like to watch their movies before I listen to their show, and I couldn't right. find it. It's nowhere. It's no streaming. Lucky had to buy a copy. Like, <laughs> it was on Amazon, but that was like about, I don't know, months ago. So it's probably yeah. gone by now. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't there, man. And I couldn't even find it to buy like a digital. So wow. It was really weird. But um, yeah. And then he says, uh, your Motu review, Motu revelations. Oh, OK. Uh, you know, um, so I actually kind of liked it. I didn't think it was as bad as everybody said. I, I, I loved it. I don't know what the deal is. Um, I mean, I get it. I, I, I know why, because like you expect He-Man uh, more of him. And and but I mean it's only the first half, so yeah. I'm down to see the second half and see what's going on. I thought the characterizations actually were pretty in line with the the original show, so I mean I'm I'm down for that. And and um, Kevin Smith's not my favorite writer, but he's a great writer. So I you know I, again I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt for that, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, and, and when me and Double A did our episode, and I I didn't give you any lead time, but I had wanted to have you on for that, and I thought about you for our '80s episode too. But again, I thought about it so late, and I know you guys need time to like make time, so it's it's hard for us to be like, hey, yeah, you're yeah. Friday night live, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, man, I'm glad to hear that you did like Revelation again. I loved it. I didn't go back yeah. and revisit the old episodes, but it hit right in the feels where I was like, like I was listening to an episode of Totally Rad Christmas. So I was like. <laughs> nice. So, definitely gotta check out, check your show out, Jerry. And I'm interested now. <laughs> you well, I hope you like it. There's some fun ones there. Uh, the, the I think one of the most fun ones is Who's the Boss? Just because I had two of my coworkers on with me that were uh, they're just hilarious. These two ladies that I, I mean, I love them to death. They're they're, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great episode. I, I listened to that one too, and I listened to it without like having seen Who's the Boss again in a long time. You know what I mean? But I mean, I just yeah. watched it with my folks. We loved it. I remembered when y'all started to say the names, and I was remembering young Alyssa Milano. I was like, dang it, y'all are doing such a great job of painting the picture. Like it was like I was watching it again. So it was fantastic. Well, I, I get and I gotta get you back on. So I'm planning um in about a month, hopefully to do a, a big Batman show. So we're going to cover Ooh. Batman in general, but specifically yeah. Batman Returns, which was technically 92, but I kind of give a little, a couple of years leeway on either side. So I really go from like 77 to 93. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, it, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. It feels uh, 80s. Exactly. You know, it's it feels, still early enough, you know. Uh, it also feels though, and I agree with you on this, it's always on my list of Christmas movies because yeah. it takes, it takes place. I, I really love that yeah. one. That's so favorite. I want to do that and then just talk Batman. And I have like a ton of people <laughs> that just want to talk Batman with me. Uh, so uh, it'll be just like fun. You know, we'll be like a big bat family talking Christmas in the, you know, quasi 80s. <laughs> I love it, man. So long as I get to be the Nightwing of the family, I'm good. There you go. There. <laughs> Dibs on uh, Batman. Well, it's my show. Jerry, right. plug away, man. And, and I'll get you out of here, brother. All right, man. Uh, and again, thanks for having me. Uh, it's always fun talking totally. with you. So totally. uh, yeah, Totally Rad Christmas. You can find it anywhere you get podcasts, uh, you know, Spotify, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, all that stuff. And um, we, like I said, we mostly just talk 80s, uh, maybe a little bit late 70s, a little bit early 90s stuff. I got some really cool things coming up. First Blood. And a lot of people don't uh, oh. realize that that takes place at Christmas too. Um, yeah, that's right. It's cold mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, I that's right. Yeah, uh, Kenny and Dolly, a Christmas to remember. We got that special coming up. I've got like three episodes that I'm dropping uh, on Tuesday because I got behind having to do my my big award <laughs> show. <laughs> so, oh, I know, man, getting, the Raddies. The Raddies. Yeah, yeah. I need I, a Raddy. Dang it, I need one. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but I had I had listeners vote. It was it was so fun, but it took like a ton of work. So I was a little bit burned out from editing. Uh, yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna let some time pass, and then I'll drop some episodes. So I got uh, I got um, what is it? Simpsons episode coming out. Christmas food Ooh. trends from the yeah. '80s coming out. Uh, yeah, like I said, Rambo. I got the uh, New Kids on the Block Part Two episode coming oh, out. So that's a really good one. Yeah. Uh, and then and some coming up. I got stuff like Cheers. Um, I, the, those satin um, baubles, those ornaments. I don't know if you remember those, the, the satin ones that are like balls. Uh, yeah, I do remember those. Yeah, we had a, we had a ton of those. Our tree for sure. <laughs> wow, so, awesome, man. <laughs> uh, and then I'm doing a bonus episode on like Stranger Things, uh, Ooh. which Ooh. you know is modern, yeah. but it's 80s set. You know, and it's that also Christmas kind of kind of incident. So um, 
excuse me. So I got I got a couple of guys uh, and, and a couple of girls lined up for that as well. We're gonna I'm gonna test out. That's like my test of like a big group. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And if it goes well, then we'll do my huge Batman episode, which I'm dying to do. But I got strawberry shortcake coming up, the bangles, an episode on Pizza Hut. So I mean I'm just oh my gosh. Remember the red cups, the Pizza Hut? Dude, red cups? I and totally do. And the checkered tablecloths. The man. checkered, yep. And the uh and, uh the, the uh table that has like the video game in it, you know, where it's oh, like a table. My God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, Pac Man. So cool, I'm like, man. I'm cool. so excited for that. And then uh, on September second, uh, I've got a bunch of wrestling fans, and we're gonna do a big like wrestling thing. Uh -oh. So if you're if you wanted to get on that one too, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just Royal Rumble style '80s wrestling. I got a few things. Um, I'll send you a link to our Discord, and uh, and you can hop on. But yeah, I got some fun stuff coming up. And and um, usually in October, I uh, well usually I've only been around for a year. Last year in October. <laughs> Uh, I, I started going two episodes a week. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep that up this year. Um, yeah, I hope I am. But uh, uh, yeah, just a lot of cool stuff coming up in the pipeline. So awesome, Jerry! It. Awesome, man. Well, before we'll, we'll try you to know, get to that ratty. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, I'm going to get in there, brother. Watch you watch. I'm going to get it. But before you <laughs> okay. go, I do want to read these few comments. Sean says, "Mask, GoBots, Transformers were life." Right. He also <laughs> says, "Voltron, both lions and cars." Heathcliff. Oh, Heathcliff had a great theme song too. Yeah, a lot of these did. 80s songs, man, they were just so good. You, you know, one of the things we talked about, me and Double A, in our 80s episode last week was about there was a movie was like tied to a, a song, you know, Take mm -hmm. My Breath Away and Top Gun, mm -hmm. you right. know, uh, Footloose and, you know, Footloose, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, Sean also says, Mona. Uh, <laughs> Joe says, uh, watch the Scooby Doo episode. I think he means listen to the Scooby Doo episode. He does. That's yeah, Joe's yeah. Episode. I, I don't, that's I don't do episode. anything with video. Uh, I'm too lazy to edit video, so I, I, no, I, I, I <laughs> that's why I go live and let throw caution to the wind. We'll see. There, you <laughs> there you go. Whatever lands, lands. Yeah, uh, I might do yeah. a couple of live shows. I think it'd be fun to do a live show or two uh, this upcoming season. So we'll see. But. You'd be perfect for it, brother. I, I tell you, man. Uh, well, look, Jerry. I already said I'll let you get out of here, man. So I will, man. Guys, go check out Totally Rad Christmas. Uh, it is a super fun show. A super tight show so it won't be drawn out like ours uh and you'll have a blast and if you're from the 80s it is especially nostalgic and jerry is again the consummate host and gentleman as well oh shucks well thanks for having me <laughs> and merry christmas merry christmas jerry. We'll catch you later, buddy. Bye. all right man take it easy <laughs> bye now bye bye Oh, man, so cool to hear from Jerry D. Man, I haven't talked to him since we did our episode, probably except online. And he's a super, super nice guy. You'll man, love this really, show. I anyway. got to check it out because, uh, well, you know me, I love Christmas. Yeah. Halloween and Christmas is like my thing. And, and he, runs a clean, so. he runs a clean show, not like us. We run a really filthy show, me and Double H. Sometimes. I love it. Yeah. Or if you hear Not Watch This with Lucky and Joe, <laughs> and they're talking about boob movies. They love boobs. So uh, John That's says, Christmas and Batman. Right, John, could it things be better? You know what I mean? Uh, Sean says, Norm, man, going into the cheers mode there. I love that. I want to drink a beer with Norm. Uh, go ahead and read these comments, sis. Uh, John also says, Roxanne, Rox loves strawberry shortcake. And then Roxanne says, I, strawberry shortcake is my favorite. <laughs> the food or the cartoon? Both. You know, I didn't get that into strawberry shortcake. I was more of a rainbow bright. Oh, okay. Uh, but I still did like strawberry shortcake. What about glowworms? Nobody ever brings up glowworms. I don't think I ever had one. I had I had a light break. Okay. The big boxy one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joe says, Purple Rain, now watch this show. Is that your next episode, Joe? What are you telling us here? I'm not sure. Are you done shopping yet? I got Sean waiting in the wings here to talk wrestling. Uh, <laughs> ruining my next guest, by the way. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and guys, if you're listening to us on audio, I'm so sorry. I ran into the break again. I'm not smart by putting on uh, guests right at the middle of our our, <laughs> our 30 minute block. So if you want to hear Jerry's full comments, please go check us out on YouTube because that was really stupid of me and my hosting, uh, which often falls short. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Joe says boobies. John <laughs> says Shira. Go ahead, sis. Uh, Joe says I had a green glow worm. So yeah, never those were a girl toy. Up, hey, it's not for boys or girls. It's for both. Let's look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Joe says, I'm on my way home. I don't know if that comment deserved to get up there. <laughs> John, uh, I knew a kid who had a glowworm. See? Okay. My bad. Um, Roxanne had popples. I didn't get into popples, but I know what they are. What about pom puppies? 
I did like pound puppies. Pound puppies. You I used to have one, a black, puppies. a black and white one. I, I think. did like pound puppies. Yeah. I think I, yeah, I did. I did have one. Oh, I think I missed a comment earlier from Jason who asked, uh, "Had we seen Mario?" Oh, uh, right. Jason, I am sorry that I missed the comment, brother. Uh, I have not seen him. I have not seen him in a while, um, and I probably don't plan to see him because I don't want to get him sick, and I'm sure he doesn't want to get us sick. Not that anybody's sick, but you know <laughs> what I mean, like. We just don't want to do that right now. So uh, I haven't seen them. Um, Joe says, judge much. Uh, <laughs> judge Dredd? I don't know. Judge Judy? Maybe. Uh, a wuzzle, Roxanne? I had a wuzzle. I remember the wuzzles. I do remember them. John really couldn't afford a pound puppy, but watched the show. John, I did watch the John's show. John like, couldn't afford a pound puppy, had a real dog instead. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, could not afford a real dog, so we watched it. <laughs> yeah, we had the pound puppy. Um, Earlier, your son asked a question, and I thought it was interesting. He said, and, and Friday Nighters that are still with us, what do you think? And I had an answer that was loaded in my brain that almost came out, but you answered first. He said, can a boy cosplay as a girl? I don't want to start a big old political debate. But, it's not a political debate. <laughs> but she quickly, her mother, she goes, yes. She, that's all she said. We didn't say anything. And I, I was thinking in my head for a second. And I didn't, But it's because... A character from a game he likes is uh, the main character. It's a video game. Is a girl, or whatever. You don't see the girl. It's like a third or third person or whatever you call it, shooter. So you don't see him. And also, like Marquise, Friday Night of Marquise is a big fan of the game Metroid. The main character in that game is a girl. Samus right. is a girl. You don't know that until the end, which takes your helmet off. You realize you've been playing as a female the whole time, whatever. But I, I think that it is okay. I used to think to myself back when we had Becky Hammond as a player on the Silver Stars. I was like, can a guy rock a girl's jersey or whatever? And it's like, I mean, obviously that was years ago. And maybe yeah. that was a question. But now it's like, I'd rock that jersey proudly or whatever. So, yeah. And you know what? I'd cosplay as a girl too. But do you cosplay as a girl but do a boy version? Or do you just cosplay as the girl? Well, I think you. I think most of the cosplays that I've seen. Like if I wanted to be Harley Quinn, do I put on boobs and heels? Or no, do I, I think do you I, would do it like as, a male, as a boy Harley a male Quinn. Version because that's mainly what I have seen. Like on Facebook and at, at Comic Cons, like lots of girls did Joker. Yeah. But they did a girl joke. Like a sexy joke. Like a sexy joker, right? They weren't like in full tux or whatever. <laughs> there probably was some that did tux like him and did the short hair wig to look like him because they liked that aspect of him, the way that he looked and that he was a boy. Okay. You know, but I think yeah. it all just depends or, or on like the, the costume. Or they like the character. Like there's characters that I like a lot. Like I like the bride from Kill Bill. I like Michonne. I like, you know, there's a lot of See, yeah, like a boy could easily be Michonne. Right. You Dude, know Tila I mean? was a super badass in this new Masters of the Universe revelation. Regarding pound that, puppies, John says he now has four dogs. <laughs> so sometimes when you grow up, you live those dreams. Uh, wanted, um, my pet monster. Yeah. I, I have the pop, the Funko Pop. Right. I bought Charlie the uh, Funko Pop because he was into that. I, I didn't, I know what it is, but yeah. I didn't get into that one. I remember that. Uh, I remember I'm five years younger than. Uh, Double A and his brothers had one. Sometimes they would get like one thing and they'd be like the three of theirs. Mm -hmm. But I remember it came with these orange like chain cuffs and they like, when you're little, like they fit on you so you could wear, <laughs> could wear his chains. <laughs> Um, I went, I know we didn't really get deep into the whole cosplay thing, but you know, we'll come back. Uh, Roxanne said she had a Tamagotchi because no, she was Kara born in Kara, Kara. Oh, Kara said she had a Tamagotchi because she was I had a, born in 1993. I think I had a Kara. Tamagotchi too because there was Digimon, right? Kara, are you from the Digimon? 90s, Kara? Where are you from? Kara from the 80s also. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, here we go. John has an interesting take on it. He says you should be able to cosplay whoever you want as long as you own that shit. All right. That's a gay comment. Go ahead, sis. It's called, Roxanne said it's called Gender Bend. Okay. Oh, I like that. Girl yeah. Joker is Harley. All oh, right. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Joe, would you let your little girl uh, cosplay as a boy character? And Joe <laughs> says, I need a drink. Okay. All right. You're well, almost home, Joe. You're almost home there, buddy. Don't do it on the road. That's what I say. <laughs> and John says, he's a firebender. I heard a great song by a, an artist called Camilla Covington called Firebender. Uh, and she talks about having sex on the period. Um, I think he was more like uh, an interesting take on that. Airbender. And Joe says yes, he would let his daughter cosplay. Would you let your sons cosplay as female characters? That's another question for you, Joe. I would. John, would you let your dogs cosplay as cats? <laughs> this show has degraded to this point. If I'm at, if I'm asking those kind okay, of questions, okay, we're done. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, uh, great stuff. Uh, waiting for Joe to get home. We have a little bit of wrestling lined up for you to bring him in. I'm sure Joe would have also loved to have been on with Jerry, but he couldn't be on. Um, you can come over if you want. Oh, 
<laughs> uh, guys, have you checked out the uh, YouTube show that I'm doing with my nephew called The Monkey and the Unky? We unbox toys. That's mainly what we do. Uh, I'm trying to get him to be a guest on Just Another Friday Night, but uh, he's yet to want to be a guest. Um, also, too, guys, if you haven't checked out yet, go check out the um, uh, Trinket Truck. Uh, that is my girlfriend's um, Facebook uh, page where she sells excuse me she sells um jewelry for ladies uh or or men basically based on what we're talking about and it could be a gift for guys <laughs> uh girls that are i'm feeling very friday the 13th right here a moment so it's sneaking up on I me mean, you want to come in here uh, i'm trying to get around <laughs> you trying to get around? You can get around in the middle. I'll get you a chair or whatever. We may have another guest here coming on in a second. Uh, you get There he is. Okay. And I didn't bring up a, a, a banner for us, guys. Guys, please welcome the monkey from the monkey and the unky. Uh, welcome. Uh, I need to let me write us a, a banner here so that we can uh, uh, get on. Say, uh, uh, say hello, uh, monkey. Hi, guys. This is the nearest master of the button. <laughs> so tell us what do you like doing the show the monkey and the unky mm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like doing I do, it i do but i think we should still have more content okay um, what do you what do you mean like more more episodes should, yeah like i think we should be doing more videos more often no more unboxing videos no. or okay can you show us anything that we've unboxed recently on our show for the for the audience Oh, you know what? Uh, here, take my chair real quick, and sis, you take over the comments, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bring something to show that we did unbox. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is my son Kalel, and like um, CM said, that they do their Monkey and the Unky show on their YouTube channel, which is really awesome. And my son just commented that he thinks that they should have more videos, uh, more content. And spoken like a true YouTuber. So, so. these are the three latest and so my favorite. So the, this is the latest we've unboxed. So this is and Morbius. Then, I can't see him that way. I got some glare in there. And then one of my other favorites. This the, is Venom. The movie Venom from 2018. Okay. What else? And then the other. This one. And this is Carnage, carnage right? Mm -hmm. Is it, um, I forgot what, what Carnage it is, um, Maximum Carnage or... Absolute Carnage. Carnage. Absolute Carnage. Absolute Carnage. What do you think will be our next unboxing? Mm. What, <laughs> mm. what do we got? Probably whatever was in that box that I saw. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, go, let's read some comments here. How do I go? Oh, here we go. Okay, it's backwards here, yeah. Okay, uh... If you click on the comment, it'll come out on the screen. Okay. John says, if I run Joe says, yes. Uh, John says, one for the road, Joe. Uh, I can't see that one. This is Sarah. Sarah this is my first time on the show. Joe says, yeah, this is a, a, a monkey's first appearance on the Just Another Friday Night podcast. <laughs> Joe says, she is actually going to be Ghost Spider. Oh, well, oh, that's we, awesome. we did open a Ghost Spider Venomized, right? Uh, Michael, you want to show this one? Yes. Oh, so that one looks that. awesome. That's like a, a, a Ghost Spider one. Kind of uh, minimized there. Uh, Joe says, yes, they're girls. Anyways, I think he means regarding his sons. Uh, <laughs> Audrey's laughing her butt off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Holty says, uh, it's called blending in. Uh, what else do we got there? Uh, Kara's okay, excited, so, uh, Kara excited for <laughs> We uh, want the monkey's appearance. And then uh, Joe says, non-binary. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, and John says, cool costume. Ooh, we got a bunch of comments in here. It's going strong, guys. Going strong. Go ahead and read those. Uh, Joe says, monkey. <laughs> Definitely a monkey. Oh, watch out for the drink. Um, right. I'm Kara's so excited. I'm so setting up for you. Kara's excited with her little celebration uh, emoji. Switch me spaces because I want to show the, the soaps. Joe <laughs> says, eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John. Uh, Joe says uh, he wants his own show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's trying to get rid of me. He needs his own show, right? <laughs> uh, John says, cool, all oh, Venom. Uh, <laughs> John also says, who's that old man in the background? That would be CM. <laughs> all right, guys. So one of the things we unboxed that was not a toy that was really cool, I thought, and really fun that I picked up recently was, uh, and I just want to make sure that we're good on time. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to take us a break because I've yet to do a break properly here. Uh, but was this. This is the 
Dr. Squatch Star Wars Soap Kit. Okay, and you're like, what the heck is that? So, yes, I bought collectible soap. Uh, <laughs> but I do plan to use it. I just haven't used it yet. So, boom, you open it like this. And there's four different soaps in there, four different scents. And uh, it's two light side, two dark side. So, you've got the Obi-Wan. Can you see it there? The Obi-Wan Only Hope Soap there. Smells good. And I'm just going to show them to you all real quick because I want you all to go check out our full video on the Monkey and the Unky where we talk about the soap and we go through each one. We unbox them. This is Yoda's Wisdom Wash, Darth Vader's Dark Side Scrub. Sorry, the light's kind of hot, so you can't really see it there. <laughs> uh, and then the Darth Maul Ruthless Rinse. What a name, right? They, they smell kinda... amazing, by the way, guys. I mean. Yeah. So this is supposed to be all natural so soap, good. no chemicals. In fact, their commercials, if you've ever been on TikTok, their commercials come out a lot. They actually say that most uh, soaps you buy over the counter are actually some type of like detergent. It's not even classified as a soap. But their soaps are all natural, maybe all natural stuff. I'm not getting any money from Dr. Squatch or whatever. I just thought it was cool that they did a Star Wars set. It was really cool. i I never seen uh, <clears throat> anything really like that before, so that yeah. was cool. But they have a bunch of other ones as well. Sorry, I turned the light down a little bit so it's not too too hot. Uh, let's see. Uh, John says, Oh, Venom, yeah. What else is John saying? Uh, <laughs> Karen says, oh, We love symbiotes. Kolo is a huge symbiote fan, the monkey. And uh, uh, uh says, Give me some of that ruthless rinse, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, monkey, you're gonna be hanging out for the rest of the show, Can you watch this back okay? Back? All right, he's gonna be in the background. So, we've got a new guest host here with us, uh, <laughs> right now, guys, and we're about five minutes out from. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, next, the uh, our first true break. I'm going to try not to bring any any uh, new guests in at this moment right now. I'm still waiting on Joe to get home and probably do our last block with us. But while we're waiting, let's bring in the Holtz if they're ready. Woo, woo. All right, let's bring them in. Let's see. Who is ready? Holtz, what's going on, my friends? We got the That's monkey. The pizza, okay. <laughs> what? Uh, I'm standing on the wings. I didn't even get a chance to eat the wings. Oh, you got no oh, wings, yeah. huh? <laughs> no, Roxanne, he, he doesn't even eat wings. I don't eat wings. I don't eat wings. I'm just, I'm just playing. <laughs> what did you guys think about the soap, Star Wars soap? Would you guys invest in that? I like the uh, only uh, hope soap. My question is how much? Ooh. What was your question, John? How much? So it was $31, uh, like, but not with shipping and tax. So... To get the free shipping, you had to spend like eight more dollars. So I spent like 41 total or whatever in total. And I got also like a, a hand sanitizer because they do like hand sanitizer. They do, they have a bunch of other scents of their soaps. Like one's called like a bay rum. You do like a little quiz and it's like, what do you like? Do you like like earthy? Do you like foresty? Do you like ocean? You know what I mean? And then it, it forms you like a little kit of scents you can get or whatever for whatever okay. your preferred smells are. Um, okay. But I went there because I saw the Star Wars ad, and I was like, I'm, I don't care what they smell like. I'm just going to buy the Star Wars soaps. <laughs> so, and well, I, well, I, I agree. I agree. I would, I would buy based on the Star Wars the Star Wars memorabilia stuff. I would buy based on that. The names were great. Yeah. The Hope so. the Sith, I, I want the Sith one, so can I buy that individually from you? Well, you not from me, but you can buy it from <laughs> drsquatch.com. You them. already have it. I just would buy it from okay. you. Wait, wait. Well, we could just take a bath together if you want, fill up the tub, you know what I mean? And, you know, get in our trunks. Get some rubber duckies. <laughs> Double A's going to be like, I quit. I quit the show. <laughs> I took it too far. <laughs> oh, well, he's used to Nene's comments, so it should be not, not, no big deal. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, we, we, oh, who is Nene? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Of all nights he doesn't hop on, I could have told him to hop on or whatever. I mean, we played with toys before, so I figured, you know, back in the day. So, I mean, you know. <clears throat> You know, I, I I could have invited him. It's not too late, probably, whatever. We'll see if we do another block here. But uh, but what are you guys up to? Uh, you are still watching Friday 13th? Friday 13th still on. One of my Ooh. favorites. Part What's happening? Know. Part one with Kevin Bacon? Four. 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 With Crispin one. Glover and oh, Corey wow. Feldman. And Corey Feldman. So i never seen any of the Friday the 13th all the way through. Why are we still friends? You know, it just never was one of my, my favorites. Like I said, you know, uh, I was always scared of like Chucky, so I think I've seen, I think I've seen all of the Chucky's, and then um, I had recently got into the Michael Myers, the Halloweens, but I would watch the Friday the Thirteenth. I just 
haven't. I know you guys have them, so I could always watch them. Yeah, we need okay. to have a, a viewing. We a viewing. Oh, yeah, we need to do that. We need to get the Friday the 13th going. We'll do a big screen showing. Halloween um, or something? There is Halloween. There's movies called Halloween. They're mm -hmm. scary movies. Like more than one? Yes. How many Halloweens is there? Do you guys know? Like 12. Like five? I, mean, I mean, if, if, you, if there's so many, and then there's the reboots too, so it's kind of like. Yeah. I want to say like what, six ish, seven? Uh, I think there's more than that. There's more like, there might be like 10. Yeah, about, um, like the second part of like a right. So they recently just had uh, this, the last Halloween that came out, Roxanne, was what, just, was it just Halloween again? Or yeah, but okay, so like there was Halloween H2, uh, was it H2? Yeah, so with, Jamie with Jamie Lee Curtis. And in that one, um, she had killed Michael Myers. I mean, killed again, all these other ones. What the heck? <laughs> and then in the next one, uh, she was in a mental hospital and had died. Well, on um, this one where they have her back, and like all the ones in between there didn't happen, and then they start her up where she's alive. So, um, it's kind of like a continuation from from the one where she had died. I think already. I didn't ask Kara. Kara, we saw the one in theater, the last one with Jamie Lee Curtis. She's already older. Yeah, but they're making. So that's it. The the recent one. Yeah, and then they're making they're coming out with the second part to that one. Well, Halloween least, Kills. Yeah, Halloween at least they don't have uh yeah, Friday. You know what is it? Uh, uh Friday the Thirteenth X, Jason X, where he's in space. Oh, we saw that I in mean, the theater. We saw that in the theater, the Dollar <laughs> Theater. Wow. Wasn't yeah, there Dollar Theater Jason for Freelance. versus Freddy? Yeah, there was a Jason versus yeah. Freddy. You know what? See, the Freddy Kruegers were always Nightmare on Elm Street were always scary for me too. Mm -hmm. Even oh, now, yeah, too. like. That's Not part two. Scary. He's in your dreams. <laughs> part yeah. two wasn't scary though. Did you did you um did you guys think that Jason versus Freddy was good? Was it a justified? Okay. I liked it, but that's because I like the two characters and Freddy's hilarious, you know. And okay. so, and they had a really hot chick, and I'm always like, oh, you got a hot chick, I'm gonna follow you. you yeah, know? Care for <laughs> that, yeah. Right? Boobs all hanging out. <laughs> you guys are obviously big horror fans. But I think that there's a little bit of a divide between you because I feel like, John, you're a big classic movie monster, Frankenstein, the werewolf, Dracula, the mummy. And Roxanne, you're a big slasher, Michael Myers, Chainsaw Massacre, Jason, Freddy. I, I am, but if people would be surprised what my favorite horror movie is because it's not any of the slasher ones from the 80s. It's actually uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's my absolute favorite horror movie I well, would, would you would you go horror or would it be more thriller? Well, you know, I okay, so people go, Oh my god, that's a thriller, so it's not horror, or oh my god, that's sci-fi, that's like people say alien isn't horror. No, I that's a straight up horror flick. Yeah. <laughs> I that's mean, scary. It's very scary. You know, and so game over, man, game over. I put all the genres and subgenres into horror. So I think that there's all different kinds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I think I mean, that I, I like Hitchcock's uh, Rear Window also. I mean, yeah. I think that that to me is like I don't man, think that's horror. You, suck, you can't do you know, you can't do anything, but all all you're doing is sitting in a wheelchair. I mean, that's I think, I think lots of different types of movies can be scary and, and can be considered horror, but and that's what I love about horror. horror. Yeah. If yeah. you don't like one thing in horror, I guarantee I will find something for you that you <laughs> like. Chucky, aren't you afraid of that? Mothman Prophecies. Prophecies, I thought was scary. I thought it yeah. was scary. It, it was a real like, like freaky. Hey, yeah, well, do you, do you remember? Do you remember spending out of my house? We were, we were in high school. Uh huh. And. My best friend and you and oh, we were best friends too. But like everybody was there, and we had like no 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 drapes, no no curtains, no nothing. Yeah, I remember. It was, and it was just like darkness outside, but you could see in. And everybody's like, "Oh, I want to get something to drink, but can somebody walk me to the kitchen?" <laughs> we had yeah. to talk about that on my birthday, my mom, and and that was just hilarious. She's like, "How can y'all be so scared?" I'm like, "Man, I have a lake behind my house." They got people like cutting stuff outside in the woods back there. It's like, 
it was it was fun, but it was creepy too. At the same time, we were kids. It was like, oh yeah, and we're sitting there watching Chainsaw Massacre. It was awesome. Oh man, totally, man. I remember being like, you know, your best friend being there, this big guy, you know what I mean? Like being just as scared as I was made me feel kind of comfortable or whatever. And, you know, it's kind of like you say, right? When there's someone with heightened fear, you know, we talked about Marquise's girlfriend, Anne, right? Roxanne, when you watch movies with her, you loved her reactions. It helps you draw in. If somebody screams next to you, you know what's coming up next, but they scream, you're like, oh, shit, like, what the hell did you scream for? You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, they're scared because they haven't seen this yet like I have. You know what I mean? And so it's a great uh, a great addition to it. I love watching movies with, Je uh, with Jess horror movies because she's a good uh, freaker yeah. outer person. So. And I love watching movies with both Jess and Anne, both <laughs> screaming on each side of me. And I'm like, this is fantastic. <laughs> just adding to Jess it. Just definitely does adding some screams in it, there right? with oh, yeah. movies. And and <laughs> both like, oh, shit. So funny. <laughs> on each side of me, they're both going <gasps> <laughs> like, oh my goodness, this is making the movie better. <laughs> they're genuinely scared. Genuinely scared. <laughs> yeah. Totally, man. Guys, uh, hang out for a second. I want to bring out I want to bring in someone new. Uh oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you guys out real quick and I'll bring you guys right back in, all right? No worries. All right, guys, uh, I want to bring a friend of mine here who's been doing some really cool stuff uh, on YouTube for a while. You might know him uh, from uh, what, something that he's been uh, doing and trying out. We'll see if we got him here. I don't know if we got him or not. Let me check it out and see. Uh, Aaron, B, Aaron B, are you there? We got audio, but no video, brother. Where you at? Wait, you got audio, but no video? Yeah, audio, but no video. What the fuck is that? <laughs> You've been asking me to come on this show for years. I finally get you on and you don't show up. Bro, this is bull crap, man. You wanna you wanna pop out, pop back in? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. And we're back. That's okay. And we're back. That's a Joe, a Joe line from the now watch this <laughs> podcast. Roxy, what happened to Holti? He bounced out. Hey, Oh, there you go. Okay, Rox, let me put you back on hold real quick. Give me a second here. There he is, Aaron B in the house, y'all. Hey, Aaron. Whoa. Aaron, I, I wanted to put a banner up for you, but I don't know what to do now because you were the big bite. You were best burger, but what are what is it the channel called now? You're Let me just tell you. Look, I'm just I'm just being myself on there. It's called Aaron Barish in this. Yeah. Oh, hey, there you go. There it is. You guys. know, go you search know? Aaron Barish. Yeah, guys. search my name and find my YouTube channel and watch them videos up in here. Now, are all the burger videos back? Can we watch all the old history there of the burger eating? Well, yes, you can. You can see me in my cat uniform and a burger, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, you can see the uh, my my titties kind of stick out of them, like my nips kind of pierce nice. out of them. Uh, you know what I mean? It's kind of Burger, nasty. Burgers and boobs. Well, I can tell you right now, Aaron, you arrived and the crowd's going <laughs> wild. Uh, Roxanne says, "Aaron." Oh. Kara says, "The great and powerful Oz." <laughs> uh, Kara says, "A Aaron." And then uh, Roxy says, "Your hair looks great." It does look really good. Yeah. Did you style before you came on live here? No, I was just lying down on the bed, and I was, I was like, "Oh, you woke up like this." <laughs> he just looked his finger stuck in the electrical socket, and then right there. <laughs> oh, like, <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> hey, man! So we had a great episode. Uh, I was proud to be a guest on the, I guess, just Aaron Barris show, which is still kind of the big bite in a way. And we, yeah, it, it really is the big bite. I mean, but in order for people to find me on there. Um, it's probably easier if I just put my name because it's like the first thing that pops up in Google when you search my name. Okay, right. so if you search Aaron Barish on uh, YouTube, though, will it come up too? Yeah, on, on YouTube, on Google, like anywhere. Okay. Because like, I'm like the only Aaron Barish in the freaking world. I'm like... Did uh, you see your mugshot? Freaking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> freaking laser beams. <laughs> Dude, so what's up, man? I've been getting questions. People keep – they ask me all the time, is Aaron going to do more food videos? Is he back to eating the birds? When's Dude, the I next just, one coming out? I just got back from Austin. Man, okay. I fucking – I shot a lot of video up there, and I'm putting it all – I'm editing it all together. I like – look at Kalel. Who's in the background? That's Kalel. Yeah, he's oh, there. Okay. <laughs> I love that. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm putting it all together. And um, it just takes a while to edit these videos because yeah. this one's going to be a little bit longer. But it's really – it's entertaining. You know, it's not just it's not just food either. It's uh, I went to a couple of museums while I was up there. Really? Okay. Yeah, and uh, like the it's a lot of it's a lot of good imagery. Yeah. You know, so I was like, you know what, I gotta I gotta do some different stuff. You know. Well, Aaron, I want to take the chance to thank you in person, man, for number one providing our mic, our first set of headphones to just another Friday man, night. There's nothing, man. I don't even do anything, man. Y'all did this show, <laughs> dude. Yeah. You've been you've been our our only financial contributor for as long as the show has been around, dude. It's, it's only like five bucks or something a month. Yeah, but you you kick in five bucks, but then you've done it for a year, man. So it Aaron, adds you up. are the podcast sugar daddy. Yeah, bro, I'm a podcast sugar daddy. Yeah. I expect that ass to put out too. PSD, you're podcast the, sugar daddy. You're the OG, bro, man. Back in the days of the booze cast, man. Do you ever miss those days of the booze cast? Oh, oh yeah, goodness. when we were sipping that booze. I don't drink. Well, I'm not drinking anymore right now, but again, okay, we were good. sipping that booze, yeah. watching myself get a little faded, start saying things to piss a bunch of people off. Oh yeah, I remember those days. Well, yeah. yeah, there was the, but there was some fun times on the booze cast too. Do you remember Ted? Remember Ted? He always wanted to find. Oh yeah, that was not Ted, cool. Ted, he had a hard life, man. He, had a <laughs> he hard was a real life. asshole, man. He was a real oh, asshole. Oh man, um, been to one time. What, what about what about sometimes? Yeah, now you're looking like a horror movie, Friday the Thirteenth style, right there. You got. I that. remember one time Ted didn't come home that night. <laughs> it was scary. Uh, uh, Aaron, do you remember when you had President Clinton on your show on the booze cast? Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember that well. Monica did not suck my pee-pee like everybody <laughs> said she did. Child here. <laughs> Speaking of that. Uh, <coughs> oh, yeah, there's a child there. Sorry. DM just uh, sent me a <clears throat> link or uh, oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> that they're going to be doing, I guess, a... Uh, what, not, not, not a documentary. Yeah, but. it's going to be like a like a made for TV movie of the Clinton Monica Lewinsky thing. Oh, with my my Monica, <laughs> <laughs> you bet your sweet ass. Let <laughs> me tell you something, Monica. I love you. I remember that stain I got on that right that that dress of yours, and I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> but. Uh... <laughs> Classic I, really wanna, I really want to get into that. Yeah, I really want to get into that. I'm going to watch it. I'm interested. Aaron B, what are you? What are you? What are you watching right now, man? Are you binging anything on on uh, Netflix or or Prime or anything like that? Like, what what kind of stuff are you doing right now besides videos? Um, I was watching this one movie with uh, called Dead Man Down. Have okay. you seen that one on Netflix? I haven't seen it yet. It's the one with Colin Farrell. And and uh, some other they're well known actors on there and uh, <laughs> I'm like halfway through right now it's pretty crazy man I was like what the hell's going on it's good <laughs> it's good though Let's all right yeah all right. yeah you gotta check that one out then for yeah. sure dead man down okay cool let me check out some yeah. of the comments here we got see uh, John says who's that young guy talking about you Aaron B oh thank you Johnny boy. <laughs> My friend Audrey sends some laughing emojis, and then Kara says he looks like the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Blair Witch Project. Let me tell you something. Where am I? Where am I? Oh. <laughs> this is what the people have been waiting for. Uh, and then uh, Roxanne says that's a damn good Clinton impression. <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Roxanne. Uh, we're here for you. We're here for all of your wonderful. Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is good. Thank you. Thank you. One. Aaron, so can we count on more videos of, of it doesn't have to be food because I know you said you were gaining a lot of weight. That was that was yeah, I was like saying like I've eaten freaking cheeseburgers all the time. But you know, that I think that was just an excuse too. Like I'm still eating cheeseburgers, like I'm pretending I'm not, but I have been. So I just need to <laughs> You know, like, uh, I, well, you know, I like that you did you did coffee last time as well. You had you tried some coffee from Gold. Oh, that yeah. was cool. Yeah, and then this this episode, I went and got coffee. I got uh, I went to uh, some museums. I went and got uh, uh, <laughs> some ice cream, and I've got some some good spots to eat up in Austin. Like this okay. one's going to be pretty good. 
Okay, I can't wait, man. Yeah, I can't excited. wait to see it. So we go just check you out on uh you just go to Google and search Aaron Barish. Yeah, if you search Aaron Barish at B A R A S H, like you'll find me. I'm like the only guy on YouTube named Aaron Barish. So okay. or, like, you know, there's probably one other guy named Aaron Barish, so <laughs> in the world. But he ain't doing the food like you, brother. So yeah, you he's not that, doing man. that. No. No. Yeah. He don't go, got it going go on. Go check out Aaron's episode where he's at Bandit Barbecue and Burgers. Oh. Yeah, that's the one you're, you're on with me, Bob Chucky you're Boy. You're truly there. You're truly there. Uh, Johnny says, remember when you had Christopher Walken on your show? Uh, <laughs> I do. I do remember that. There's no way we can get him on right now with all of us, though, right? You have to well, take me You know what? You, you might be surprised what, what I'm able to do now. He also says try some vegan food, but. We got boom the whole time. Oh, oh you know, you know, baby. Every time I've been on the show. Woo! Like, woo! Yeah, I mean, this, this is what happens when Double A leaves me. I have, I'm resorting to this. I got walking here. Hey, I got Clinton hey, here. Hey, <laughs> hey, let me tell hey, you, Johnny boy. I hey, love you. I love you. <laughs> Blair Witch, Blair Witch, right here. You call me when you want to. I like you need a burger. All right, we're good. <laughs> hey, I said it was going to be a variety show. Seventy-five big episodes, all leading to this. We've had everybody and their mom on, and it's been great. Hey, yeah, that's about. Hey, give me a burger. Uh, what I was that, Christopher? Huh? <laughs> You want a burger? Wait, no, I can't do it right now. I'll be like this. I'll do a. Uh, no, I think Arnold's coming back. Yeah. Oh, no. like, you want to eat? You want a burger? Uh, oh, you son of a bitch! Oh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you gotta wow. Well, it's it's the booze cast all over again. It just rename this the uh, <laughs> the unofficial reunion right here, man. Uh, Dude, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, so what's, what's up over here? What are we talking about now? We're talking about movies up in here? We're talking all things. Man. Well, John says you should eat some vegan food. Will you eat e vegan food, Aaron? Man, I tried to be a vegan for like two weeks, man. I was over at that that uh, Earth Burger every freaking day spending $25 for a cheeseburger. Hey, I said cheeseburger. Hey, Dude, <laughs> don't ever go to Earth Burger. Well, if you want to spend a lot of money, you know, and you're vegan, okay, I get it, you know. But have y'all been over there? No, I haven't. I haven't. No. Oh, I haven't. you have a chance. Try not to make it though, because <laughs> if, you, if, if you if you don't want to spend money, then you're you're doing good, you know. But yeah, I tried to be a vegan. There was this guy at work yeah. who was a vegan. We're kind of losing. Huh? Yeah. We're kind of losing you, Aaron, a little bit. We're kind of losing you a little bit, man. I think your no. connection might be going out. Don't say that. You slowed down. But, oh, Aaron, man. I want to thank you for coming on, man, finally. And we'll oh. tell everyone to go check you out on uh, Google, search you, and uh, YouTube as well. All right, guys. Aaron B. was in the house. That was cool, right? Hey. Little, guest, little guest shout out, shout there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if he comes back. Let's. Oh wait, I think we might have got him back. Let me see. Let me see. Aaron, are you I back? Showed up. Hey. Hey. hey, Aaron. Hey, hey. You got to stop walking around, man. Go sit next to the Wi-Fi and sit down. Okay. Uh, I don't think we got any audio. Do we got audio? Can you hear us? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear you? Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. You're just like on a lag. <laughs> All right, man. The well, story of uh, my freaking hey, life. I know. Hey, plug your stuff, and, and then we'll get you out of here. Uh, yeah, what the hell is oh. that, Chucky? Okay. Uh, go know. check out Aaron Barish, The Big Bite. Woo! Woo! Big Bite, Woo! baby! Woo! Woo! Hey, uh, Aaron, my good friend Audrey, uh, she's Audrey B. Uh, no, she she is Audrey B. Audrey B says, "I love Aaron B." <laughs> oh, thanks, Audrey. Hey, uh, check out my YouTube channel. I got another one coming. I'm gonna actually finish adding it up after this episode. Awesome! Yeah, I can't wait dude. to see it. Aaron. No, I can't wait. That's why I'm letting you go because I want you to go work on that episode because I want to see it. And I know Stephen, formerly of the Boozcast, is waiting to see it too. 
Well, I'm gonna have it out for you, fellas. You know it, man. All right. All right. Peace. We love you, Aries. All right, man. We'll catch you later, buddy. Okay. All right. Well. All right, Holtz. Uh, I gotta bring, yeah, bring in a new voice. guest. All right, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna push you guys out. And if you guys want to hang out, great. But if you gotta go, that's cool. All right, guys. Uh, I want to bring in now uh, another new friend I made in the world of podcasting. Uh, he, and actually, before that, before he was a podcaster, he was a fan of the show. Uh, and then through the show, got his own show. So uh, without further ado, when we bring on from now, watch this. He goes by Little Joe on there, which I don't like that name. So we got to <laughs> get him a new name or whatever. But um, guys, Little Joe from the Now Watch This podcast. Joe, can you hear us? Can you see us? Yes, 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 yes. Everybody, what's up with the monkey back there? Hey, oh, you saying hi, monkey? Hi. <laughs> Dude, you got to go check out our episodes. He has, uh, we've given some shout outs to you guys on there because Lucky has provided us some awesome figures, man. And oh, guys, now, yeah. um, if you're still out there with us, um, oh, go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. No, no. I've been watching the uh, unboxing shows. Um, and I'm getting my uh, my daughter into it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. She's been really into Ghost Spider recently. So Yeah, man. So is the Ghost Spider just like Spider-Gwen? Is that Spider-Gwen? Spider -Gwen, yeah. Spider-Gwen okay. uh, turns into Ghost Spider. If Double A were on, he would know. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> All right. All right. So far from me. How was uh, shopping? School shopping? Uh, uh, this was needed. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to need a few more. Right? <laughs> it's I totally a mad house out there. Yeah, it I'm is a mad I got, house I got everything finished last weekend because I was like, I don't want to have to do it right before. Yeah. Us, so. And um, so, yeah, I think my daughter were okay, but uh, I still got the two older girls to shop for. So. <laughs> It's always but, the other ones. You know where I was directing them to was uh three legged rabbit.com there. Hey to man get their uh t shirt needs, but um you know what I like to think that if my dad had a podcast back in the day, I would <laughs> I would probably rock his shirt at least one right? day of school, you know what I mean? Maybe like senior day when you were playing in the water or whatever. You know? Uh, you know, I mean, they wear the white Just Another Friday Night shirt when it's that last day of school. You get everyone to sign it. You remember, remember that back in the day? Great idea. Man, you know what? Cool. We should just show up at high school, at their high schools, and say, hey, this want to sign our shirts. It's just the thing is, I mean, with our stature, they probably think we're middle school kids. <laughs> You know, and uh, you know. what are these middle schoolers doing here? Yeah, they're not cool. Aaron B says he's still here watching Joe. Uh, John says Joe, glad you made it home. And Aaron B says, "What up, Joe?" Barely, John. The southeast side is packed. <laughs> Crazy man, Friday night, man. I'm telling you. Oh yeah. All right, Amy and Monkey, we're going to switch gears a little bit. You guys can stay and hang out and offer your opinions, but if you guys got to go, you're free to go because this one might get a little bit out of your range. We're going to talk a little right. bit of wrestling, and I'm going to bring in another oh. friend of mine that no one has met before <laughs> in the podcast world. He is not a podcaster, but he's an avid contributor to many of the uh, groups that Joe and I kind of uh, – I don't know what you could say. Circle in. I kind of feel like we're we're in these yeah, groups, you know. but uh, it's just. Uh, I, know, I would like to think we're in them together, but you know, you're always talking. <laughs> I don't, against I don't me. see you that much. Sometimes you're there, sometimes you're not. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Let's bring in my buddy now, Sean. Sean, what is going on, my man? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Yeah, I can see you. I can hear you. What's going on, man? All right, all right. Sean. Welcome. Sean, to the show, how's it man? going? Hey, how's it going? You guys doing good? Doing good. This is my sister, Amy. Hey, Amy. How you doing? This is the monkey, my nephew. Hey. And Joe from the Now Watch This podcast up there in the uh, upper. He's upper right for me, but I don't know where he's at for you. <laughs> yeah. Upper right. Sean, how's it going? Doing good. All right, guys. Well, being that it is our 75th episode, you guys have heard the show. You know that on several episodes we talk about wrestling. And I cannot think of two bigger wrestling fans than you two guys right here. And I'm missing one of my guys, the guy that does our music, Albert. Um, he's in Austin at a concert. Crazy. But I guess he already had the tickets and you got to tell yourself, what do I do? Throw the money away or not go? You know what I mean? So I I'm sure he's yeah. being smart or whatever because, um, you know, he always is with mask and all that stuff or whatever. But um, 
Sean, let me first real quick throw up your uh, info right there. If you want to guys find Sean and talk any trash with wrestling, go to at Styles, <laughs> S-T-Y-L-Z, 116 on TikTok, or as you see it there, underscore S-T-Y-L-E-Z, underscore on Twitter. Uh, I'm sure Joe will get in there with you and want to mix it up with you on there, Sean. But guys, tell me what's up. Me and Double A say this. On the current product, we're not that caught up. But what are you liking? What are you hating? What are you loving? Sean, let's start with you. Current product. Um, you know you what? Know. Let's go. Let's go with Joe's favorite WWE. What? Um, yeah, Sean. <laughs> Look, go ahead, Joe. What's your favorite so far? Um. Well, I mean, I watch WWE again. I watch uh, other promotions as well. Uh, not as much though i mean it's just i mean who has the time now really there's so much out there but that's the good thing about being a wrestling fan right now is that there's so much content out there that that we can see um you know and that that these um wrestlers they do have options out there you know it's not just the the one big one and you know everything else it's it's you know uh impacts of uh you know a viable option uh, you can go to Japan, you can go to Mexico, and, and you know you can work the circuit and 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 make some money. You know, that's true. Um, I, and like you said, I think this is probably the best time to be a fan because now you're just exposed to so much stuff. And you're right; I don't I don't have time to watch it. I usually just record it on Hulu, and just whenever I have a minute, I'll go through and you know watch what I can. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much try I, to this point now. I used to have a favorite, you know, back then it was like WWE, FE, whatever it was. Uh, but now, you know, AEW is surprising me, and next NXT. Like, I rather, if I have to do a hierarchy, I would probably do SmackDown, uh, NXT, then AEW is like right side by side. I mean, Raw is just like, if I'm bored, I watch Raw. Well, it's like, just going downhill lately. Yeah. Um Sean, have you seen NXT lately? Uh you know, um they recently released a lot of people. Uh yeah. um, most, most surprisingly was uh, uh Bronson Reed that they just released uh Thick Boy, so um yeah, that's crazy. Um now, was that the was that the the guy that got released from AEW, the some type of comments that came out or my I... No, no, AEW had a wrestler that's doing a rap gimmick and he came out and he talked about like Simone Biles mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and then he made a rape joke yeah. in there as well, I believe. And, um, you know, they're just not standing for that. I mean, they, they suspended Sammy Guevara and he's one of their top stars for just a comment he made on Twitter, I believe. So, yeah. um, yeah, I think that guy just might be in trouble. Wow. Yeah. I think he's off TV for a little bit. I mean, especially with, the. Uh, the, the, the temperature of the climate now you really kind of got to watch certain questionable comments you made and you're right they suspended Gravara because he talked about raping Sasha, uh, Sasha Banks when Yikes. he was at the uh, performance center he said he was, that yeah he, yeah, he, he made a, a off color joke about it man and it yeah. it's just like I said like Sean said um, <laughs> now they, you can't get, a, get away with stuff like that man people are just yeah. not going to stand for it and and rightfully so, like the Simone, Simone Biles thing was, you know, it's a real sensitive subject right now. Um, and then the rape thing, and and that's one of the things that, um, as we're gonna get into it, I'm sure here is. I, I know um, there's a lot of talk about how like WWE, they uh, produce their stuff, and and a lot of their stuff is scripted. These are the reasons why it is stuff like this that that gets out, and that while sometimes you don't like that they're so scripted. I, I as as a WWE fan, I'll tell you sure. right now. Sure. Yeah. You know, how are you going to get yourself over the way a Stone Cold did or the way the Rock did? Um, yeah. Without being able to go and and say your own stuff and and without having to come out and be scripted so much, but. On the other side of it is, you know, WWE is a, a big entity now, you know. Um, stuff like this happens in, in, in their area, you know, it's it's hurting in the pocketbooks big time. 
you know, with, with advertisers and stuff like that. So while you can not like the, the scripted aspect of it, you know, you can appreciate some small aspects of it, you know, when situations like this happen. Yeah. What do you think about that, Sean? Do you think like that the scripting is kind of in place to prevent them from being like that? Or do you think that they should have kind of a, you know, a general wherewithal on what they're saying and not saying whatever, not to take the show totally serious here again, guys. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I guess I didn't think about it that way, Joe. I didn't think about like, oh, scripting is in place for that. But then I also yeah. would think that, come on, Sammy, and come on, this other guy, like, really right now, like, we're very aware of the climate that we're living in. Like, it's like, you, you I think you can still catch good heat without having to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Say, yeah, yeah. Right. You don't need heat. Yeah. 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 I mean, I look at it like it's a good with a bad. I mean, it's a good because the fact that you have people that you have to, uh, lines you have to have approved before you can go out there and say them on national TV. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Vince has to find a word. The only bad thing I see with it, and it's a small bad thing, is that you're literally not getting to know that person, that person not fully able to put their personality into their character because they're, they basically are saying Vince's words. Because if you have yeah. been told to say it like this, say it like this, emphasize this, say it like this. Um, John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, he yeah. spoke about that where he said it was like over uh, production. Like it was like they just basically like set over your shoulder. And like you got to say it like this. You got to rehearse it like this. Yeah. And yeah. where AEW, you know, you can, they can give you a platform, but you're able to put more of yourself in it. So for me, I think for character believability, it hurts it a little bit. But for you're trying to appeal to a mass amount of people, and you don't want to come off insensitive or say the wrong thing, it's you know it's a good standpoint because you have yeah. people that kind of put the net out like you can't say that, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, great, great point. Great point. Now, Joe, let me ask you. So we. I've been in groups with you guys. We've had kind of these debates. We've talked in, and again, we don't have to go, you guys, you know, we're being civil. I mean, obviously, and I don't think you guys are going to be uncivil, but I just mean, you know, we have our favorites, right? You know what I mean? Joe, I know that you're a big WWE guy. If Albert was here, he would say the opposite. And he's a big AEW guy. Um, you know what I mean, and I wish he was here to, to offer that, that side of it. You know what I mean? Because you guys are pretty split. Now, Sean, I know you ride the middle of the road. You know what I mean? You, you enjoy both products. I think that, in many ways, uh, me and Double A are a lot like you because we were watching a lot of New Japan for a while. And mm -hmm. man, I was eating it up, man. That version of Bullet Club right after AJ with Kenny. And I know yeah. he, Double A was watching even when we you know the, the Kenny, the, the uh, AJ stuff and the Finn stuff that far back. He's the one that got me into that and ROH. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's just about good wrestling. You know, uh, Sean, if you've heard any mine or Joe's show, you know. We're criers, man. You know what I mean, and it, it doesn't take much, but dude. Like, I never thought a wrestling match could bring me to tears or whatever. But you know, Sean Taker won. You know, Sean Flair. Mm -hmm. And dude, when I even when I saw um, <clears throat> Sami Zayn and Nakamura won at yeah. uh, Takeover, uh, I think it was Dallas when that was Nakamura's first NXT title. I mean, dude, that was the first time I heard the Fight Forever chant, and mm -hmm. it really was like, like. I would like inadvertently was like tears are streaming out. I'm like, man, these guys are giving their freaking soul right here. And that's the beauty of wrestling that I try to explain to people sometimes that aren't big fans or just remember the nineties or just remember the eighties. And I'm like, no dude, there's still a lot of talent out there that they're doing just physically without words. You know what I mean? So, so, and again, uh, you know, Okada and, and Kenny, uh, one, uh, I mean, freaking amazing. Jericho, Kenny one, Jericho, Kenny two. Yeah. I, I always go back to some of the old SmackDown matches, uh, Orton and uh, Christian, that were like just on regular SmackDown when they were fighting yeah. for the, the, the World Heavyweight Championship at the time, the big gold belt, and they were killing themselves, and they were having these beautiful matches. Do you guys remember any of like the, the Ted DiBiase stuff with Orton too, Ted DiBiase Jr. with Orton? Yeah. The guy yeah. was amazing in ring. He sucked on the mic, but he was doing amazing stuff in ring. You know no, I mean? um, that 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 faction. I think they they were like the dynasty or something like that. Legacy, um, legacy, legacy. Uh, with Orton, uh, Cody Rhodes, Cody. and and DiBiase. That was one of my favorite factions. Uh, um, of of all there. Wow. Uh, for a little while there. Um, uh, what happened with me is I, I was into wrestling. 
of course, late 90s. Um, uh, well, since the 80s, really. Uh, you know, I, I was a Hulkamaniac, uh, eating my vitamins and saying my prayers, brother. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I loved wrestling, man. Like, especially in the in the late 90s when the NWO came along and, and DX. And even back then, I, w- I was always, you know, like, hey, this dude Stone Cold, man. Like, he's he's going to... He's gonna be one to watch and, and stuff like that. Um, I fell off a little bit, but I came back in the late two two thousands um, as I had kids, you know. Right. Um, they got into it. I got back into it. I learned about CM Punk and 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 CM Punk coming up and stuff like that. And, and you know, um, I got back into it. Now they've fallen off. And now I'm stuck back in it uh, uh, again, you know, every Monday night watching and um, every uh, Friday night now. And and uh, even though I miss SmackDown a lot of times to watch just another Friday night live. And and uh, so there you go. You're taking a view away from Vince McMahon, Chuck. How do you feel about Last that? I heard, last I heard, I was putting their ratings in the tank is what it was. You know what I mean? So. Take the W. Take what can w. I do, right? Yeah. What can I do? Not necessarily straight down, but yeah. <laughs> Sean, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I had a lull, like he did too, like mm-hmm. where I, I just got out of it. I stopped watching it. I mean, I grew up at the in the 80s where Devon Eric was king, you know? Yes. And I went to, you know, fortunately, I got to see a few, a, a lot of them, most of them, before they all, before most of all of them passed. I got to see them in person. Which was awesome. Dude, wow. My, uh, my grandfather got me into it. And that was every Saturday night. It was you no know, WCCW, Devon Eric, yes. Chris Adams. Uh, I got to see Steve. It's funny. I got to see Steve Austin when he had long, streaky hair, 80, 80s <laughs> trunks. Wow. School. I got to see him live in person before. Stun and Steve. Yeah. Yeah. So, Stun and Steve, I think it might have been. Yeah, you're right. So to me, that will always be, you know, one of the greatest times because at that point they lived their persona, you know, and they hit the town. They didn't, you know, associate with each other. It wasn't, you know, entertainment. They lived their persona. You know, they talk mess. You know, when I see you, I'm kill you. You know, Bruiser Brody was literally killing everybody he came across, you know, yeah. and then you got into the 90s and then, you know, NWO, the attitude error, it, you know, it, it, it brought me back in for me and then after that like that wcw invasion the ecw i just kind of like eh. you know yeah. i stopped watching yeah i got back into it nxt was a big part of it because yeah. you started seeing promising new stars and and that's why you said bronson reed it really hurt a lot because he was homegrown <clears throat> in nxt they brought him up he was just like north american champion like what two three months ago yeah, yeah. And that's the thing I don't fucking understand about that, bro. Like I am like okay, I'm 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 tell you right now, I'm a big WWE fan and I'm not necessarily a fan of AEW. And and yeah. I'll tell you why in, in, in a bit. But the 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 w, WWE side of it, a big part of my fandom was NXT. You know, mm-hmm. I, I tell Chuck uh this a lot is that um Johnny Gargano is our guy. Like Chuck and I were never going to see a fucking ring, right? Um, mm-hmm. and even though Chuck went out to tryouts, you know, he did his little thing. Uh, <laughs> but shout out for that, at least. Um, yeah. Unless we're fucking going to be a Bobby Heenan type, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, someone out there to draw the heat and take a, take a few bumps. We're not going to see a ring. But, you mm-hmm. know, um, Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling is my fucking guy like you know um so you know him and him and uh chiapas um fights and and hit him adam cole oh my god like i mean those are some of the most epic fucking fights that i've seen recently and and that's the thing i'm worried about now you know you can read the dirt sheets you cannot but where it is you know adam cole got talked back into staying Mm-hmm. And um, Vince McMahon sees the motherfucker as, as the next Shawn Michaels, which those of us who have been watching him um, before NXT and in NXT, like, no, you know, Adam Cole's a fucking star. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. No. yeah. 
Well, what do you think about that, Sean? You feel the same way about NXT and and you know yeah, what's going that? To me, NXT was like the crown. It was like the you know one of the crown jewels of WWE. I, like I prefer NXT overall, but yeah, I, you know, and there's so much stuff like going on. You read that you know the dirty sheets, you know people who think they know internet geniuses and stuff like that. But uh, I've been Dave, Dave Meltzer, reading, yeah, reading between the lines here, and I seriously believe the issue is what killed WCW. Um, that if you think about it, they they brought a guy in Nikki Khan. In the four months he's been in, what they released, what twenty five people, twenty five yeah, people, you know, behind the scenes people. They destroyed WWE Network, which I don't know if you've seen Peacock, but this this Peacock crap is is ridiculous. Like I, I the network was the best thing. Yeah, yeah. They literally so, just uh, they disbanded that. This Peacock mess is like it's like watered down or PG WWE, you know, uh, network. They took a lot of the edgy stuff off. And for what they are saying is they're restructuring NXT and going to make it strictly developmental. No more yeah. bringing in Adam Coles or things like that. Nobody over thirty. Nobody shorter than like five foot ten. So they got back to that breeding ground, like performance center type thing. There goes our shot, bro. Yeah, that's it for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we, 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 we had a shot. Going in this direction is when you start putting suits in charge of things where instead of having people who know the business and know what the business is about, know what that's going to entertain the fans, it's just like putting the nail in the coffin. It's going to start degrading. Yeah. yeah. I'm, right now, as a WWE fan, like, and, and Chuck can tell you, he's seen me out there. I'm I'm the biggest fucking shill out there. Mark, <laughs> whatever you want to call me, call me. Um, you know, I was that kid in nine, 1998 fucking trying to squeeze my ass in behind uh, Jerry the King Lawler and and uh, <laughs> JR just to get on screen. Mm-hmm. Now, saying that is, I love the WWE. I, I love the product. I, I'm, you know what? And my wife don't like I say this shit, but WWE's been there every Monday night uh, for me since I was a teenager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every Monday night. No matter what, it, it's been there. Except for that fucking dog show, it's been there. <laughs> <laughs> Westminster dog show. I, yeah. I, get, I get where you're going though, Joe. You can count. You could count on wrestling. You could count yeah. on Monday night. You could count and, on and, and and wrestling in general. There's no fucking off season. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. baseball is an off season. Football is an off season. Basketball is an off season. W. I mean, wrestling is. There's no off season. These guys are going. You know, you got to respect what they do. As, as a kid that that grew up, you know. Not always having shit to count on or whatever. You can always count on that Monday night. There's that that fucking show that was there. So you got to respect what the fuck they they've been doing, you oh, know, yeah, totally. all this time and stuff like totally. this. Now, now it, it, it's like Sean said is, I don't know what the fuck's going on, bro. Like, like you know, they're releasing, they released, you know, um, Ray Wyatt. I mean, Ray I thought, Wyatt. They, I know, thought they yeah. were putting the rocket on this guy. They did that house or whatever he was doing for a while. You know, that was one of the matches I watched. And again, you guys helped me out maybe one or two manias ago when he fought Cena in that match. And it was cool. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I was like, okay, oh, this the is match. Which one, John? The fun, yeah, the yeah. Fun house? Yes. Firefly it fun was kind of like they filmed something before yeah. and they had NWO Cena. Like, yeah. I was like, all right, this is creative. Like, I, I like it. It's fine. You know what I mean? Um, so I felt like they were kind of trying to groom Bray to be the next <laughs> taker almost. And then to hear that he got released, I was like, wow. Even Strowman, for a while, I felt like Strowman was like becoming their guy, Vince's guy, and then let go. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Like, like that's weird. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, what really upset me was you have all these, like you said, NXT. Remember what NXT was like? You had Gargano, you had Aleister Black, you had Rusev, you had, um, uh, on Andrade, Andrade. Yeah. all them stars that were just like tearing it up every night, every weekend. Takeovers were like successful, you know. Stinsky, uh, even Joe when Joe was there, Samoa Joe. Yeah. Then they come up to the main roster and they're like Vince, yeah, play with them for a little bit, and the new new little shiny bobble. And then you're like, how you know how is Joe like just tearing everybody apart at NXT? And then you know Joe comes to the main roster. You know he's still you know he's still putting his feet in his hands on people. 
but yeah, he's yeah. taking like losses, you know. Uh, Balor, you know, they didn't really do anything with Finn, and I, and sometimes I wonder is this kind of like a thing where you know, yeah, you're NXT, but remember this is the main show. You're still like minor kids coming up, you know. Right. I don't but know. These are the coolest people. I mean, Balor's yeah. work in Japan alone, you know, puts him at a, a, a higher echelon than what they treated him when he was in the main roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. That guy was doing five star matches on NXT, you know, stuff before Shinsuke got there. But then when Shinsuke got there, he was just having these like classics, man. I mean, it was like I got to say, like, you know, the Japan stuff was was great. But I that like maybe first run, I guess you could say in, mm -hmm. for him in NXT for Finn, I became a true big fan, man. I mean, like I got like three or four shirts like I'm like, I'm a Finn guy like this is my guy. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, I get that he was small, but I was like, they're going to make it work on main roster like they did with Sean. That's what I thought. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, like, we saw it happen again and again and again. The same thing with Shinsuke. I was watching the Japan stuff. Then he got there. That NXT stuff was great. And it seemed, it seemed like everybody's run was getting shorter, right? It was like, okay, we're going to have him NXT, like, way less than Finn. Because I know he got there, main roster, and he got hurt. You know what I mean? It's like, they were kind of saying that. They were like, yeah, man, these guys are, like, burning themselves out in NXT. Mm -hmm. And when they get to main roster, they don't have – they're 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 all broken down in a sense in a ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, here's the thing with Finn is they did, they did, they were strapping it to his back. Like mm -hmm. he did, he did come. He was the first uh, Universal Champion, mm -hmm. and you know, and you know, he got hurt. Unfortunately, I still think he does have a bigger future ahead of him. But man, you're you're right. Like when he came back, they they do nothing. With him. They tried in the beginning. Um. Yeah. You know, people like Seth Rollins have, have, have taken off. Um, Roman Reigns at, at first, you know, you know, he was, you know, charging water. They were trying, trying, trying. This latest Ro Roman Reigns, he's fucking hit. Like, okay. He, uh, and, you know, people disagree, might disagree. He's the most over fucking thing in wrestling right now. Uh, yeah. He's got the look, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, he is the guy. He is the fucking man. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now. It's like you look at him compared to anyone in fucking NXT. I mean, not NXT and AEW, and they they just don't compare right now. Okay, good. Go ahead, Sean. What's your take on that? No, I was gonna agree with him. Like you know, the most okay. imposing figure right now is Roman, and you know what? It's because he finally it finally clicked. I think it finally clicked. Yeah, where yeah. He, you're he right. You're right. Into his character, and once he did that. I felt bad for Roman because I felt he I felt he had the Cena syndrome where Vince was trying to you know force him down everybody's throat and people were like, well, come on, you know? Yeah. But since he came back and he's been he's put more of himself into his character. This whole bloodline thing is phenomenal. That's like some yeah. of the best work that he has done in quite a while, you know? And yeah. you, you you know what the end game is. Like you know what the end game is. That motherfucking rock is coming back. Mm -hmm. He's coming like, back. And or Roman. Yeah. I feel like any time that you put you you have a guy that has everything but is missing the mouthpiece, you know, put Heyman with them right away. Like they waited too long for that or whatever. Cause we knew that Roman couldn't talk. And it was yeah. like he was good with the shield. I like that stuff. And obviously, yeah. good looking guy, good, you know, physique, good. I thought he'd be pretty good in ring too. You know what I mean? It was like, man, they took too long with the Heyman thing or whatever. You know what I mean? Because it's like anytime you know a guy can't talk, let Heyman do the talking. It's going to be perfect. But I don't know. I don't know to say that, you know, when you say when you say that he's the guy and things like that, Joe, it's like, you know, and to say that no one in, in AEW can compare, do you mean like physically or in ring? Because now and again, I haven't seen a lot of stuff lately, you know, but there was a time when Kenny was the best wrestler in the world. I mean, there was no doubt that I thought Kenny Omega, I was like, I was going out of my way to watch Kenny Omega matches, you know? Yes. Yeah. No. I think I know what he means. He means overall picture, Mike, okay. talent in the ring, the look. He's put all three together, and that's why Roman, he, he's it right now. Yeah. And and, and I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I was staying up to 2 in the morning to fucking watch Kenny Omega fight live in New Japan. You know, to see that first Jericho fight. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if y'all know, is Jericho does have a podcast, uh, Talk is yeah. Jericho. Yeah. It was a good podcast. It, it's not as good anymore. 
It wow. used to be great. Like it used to be. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the thing is, is Jericho used to praise Vince McMahon on the podcast mm-hmm. to talk about Vince being a fucking genius. Mm-hmm. He, he talked about him going to New Japan and Vince telling him, yeah, go over there. Yeah. You know, have your fun. Do, do this and do that. You know, you know, um, you know, make your money. And Vince is all about that. But now, you know, he comes to AEW and all of a sudden, you know, uh, Vince is an idiot. You know, Vince is, uh, uh, it's a stupid idea by bad creative. Right, yeah. um, which was the AEW thing. I now, yeah, when when AEW launched, I was happy. I was I was happy. You know, I list, uh Conrad Thompson does a lot of the podcasts. Uh, he does the um, Bruce Pritchard podcast, the Tony Schiavone. He does um, Kurt Angle, uh, Eric Bischoff, um, and he was. He's a shill for fucking AEW. I'll, I'll say it like that. Um, <laughs> he used to do, uh, run the WrestleFest before AEW happened, and they would he would run the WrestleFest around where Cody and them were wrestling, and okay. the Young Bucks when they came back from uh, Japan. Now, when AEW launched, I was like, you know, Kenny Omega's finally fucking coming to the U.S. audience. They're finally gonna see this guy, and they're finally gonna see how badass he is. And then they have him lose to fucking Jericho in the first fucking um, double or nothing or whatever. And yeah. and I to to me, he lost everything there uh, losing to Jericho like that. So AEW's first strap went on to Jericho, and you know he held this motherfucker for a long time. Yeah. I personally, I thought it should have been Kenny Omega, like Kenny Omega. No one had ever seen him. Uh, you know, he had this legend behind him in New Japan as the best wrestler in the world. And then he comes to AEW and he loses to a fucking Chris Jericho, who is awesome. I, I, I'm a Jericho-holic from fucking mm-hmm. WCW, but a WWE guy. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm saying right he now. He didn't look he great looked, either. Like, Jericho no. looks like he's just gotten... Go ahead, Sean. Jericho basically he took that movie, The Wrestler Heart. And he's living that middle aged wrestler fan yeah. lifestyle right now. <laughs> no, 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 Sean. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a better one. I'm gonna give you a better one. Jericho, when he was in WCW, talked shit about like Hulk Hogan and, and all of them mm-hmm. either hanging on too long and holding down the younger wrestler. Now I'm not saying Jericho holds anyone down in AEW, but he's basically playing Hollywood Hogan. Yeah, in, in, in AEW right now. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and like I said, man, too, like, you know, it was crazy to see Edge come back at SummerSlam. Was it SummerSlam? Royal Rumble, right? Royal Rumble. And, and yeah. Royal Rumble. When this, yeah, the Rumble. When he came back, he looked great. And it just seems like, you know, you know, his physical form as an older guy, he looked great. And it was like, Jericho has just looks like he's gotten increasingly sloppy. Like I knew he had quit drinking for a while. And I used to listen to talk as Jericho a lot. And I liked it. I remember he'd have on gallows and, uh, and Anderson and do talking shop. And he had oh, a lot the of great talking episodes. Shop drunk episodes were great. Yeah. He would do some stuff like that. And I remember for a while he was doing like keto or something like that. And, uh, he was, you know, I, I even liked when he would do his episodes that were outside of wrestling and, paranormal stuff and all that i know he's a fan of that uh and you know he's a movie buff too whatever so yeah. but yeah he just kind of seemed like he went off the rails uh the longer amount of time he spent in AEW, and he's gotten more and more out of shape he doesn't look good his moves are not as fresh and he hasn't really you know it's kind of like we expect certain things out of jericho um and he's modified his move set a little bit but it's just like not creative anymore like one of the things i had always loved about punk and brian is that they had the ability to kind of like <clears throat> put their own twist on certain moves and make it in a way fresh or whatever. You know what I mean? The Anaconda Vice, uh, you know, uh, some of the, the stuff that Daniel Street? Bryan did. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Street Street, that he yeah. stole from Kenta. That he stole, yeah. But I, I just always admired yeah. that ability. And, and I, I would kind of felt like they were kind of, uh, you know, I would say in my mind, I would put them under that learning tree of a Jericho almost because I felt like Jericho was a guy that did stuff like that. You know what I mean? And then it was just like, all that's gone. It's like, I don't see any of that now in him. Um, 
you know, and it just, it, it's sucks. I'm like, man, like, you know, there's no way you can be hanging out in their top tier over there at AEW, you know, uh, without being better. You know what I mean? Like, and again, they have better younger talent. That's awesome. Like, I mean, you know, rest in peace, Brody Lee, but I really liked what they were doing with him. Cause he was a guy that I thought as part of the Wyatt family just was not where he needed to be. And when I heard him speak on podcasts, I think I heard him on Cole Cabana's podcast. I was like, my God, this guy's really eloquent. Like he really? was, yeah, he had a great speaking voice and he was very intelligent sounding. And I was like, man, clean him up, put him in a suit or something and give a whole new thing. And so I think maybe what they were doing at AEW was going that way. And then unfortunately he passed, you know what I mean? But I just feel like those guys that came over from the bullet club were, you know, supposed to be the top. And then it just was like, it wasn't all there, you know what I mean? And and even getting the revival, I thought that would have led to something big, but it didn't feel like it just kind of fizzled out, you know what I mean? Uh, Sean, I feel like you got some some big thoughts on this. Well, I mean, the only thing I think about that is, and I get what you're saying, with them coming over and probably being on top or whatever, but in the same sense, think about it. Everybody knows this is your company. And if you come over and you just start dominating right off the bat, like Omega champion. Bucks champion, you know, Hangman, True. TNT champion. People go, after a while, people are going to be like, well, it's their company. You know? Right. right. So and I see what they were trying to do. They were trying to come over, put their name in star power. Even Jericho, I think, you know, I think on one of his podcasts, Jericho even said it. They did him the first champion so that with his name is out there. And he gets people mm-hmm. talking. I hear Jericho's AEW champion. Well, what's AEW? What's AEW? And it gets the conversation going. But, you know, and, they, and the fact that they don't, what I respect about AEW is they don't hide anything. They sit there, Cody tells it, yeah, I'm an EVP. You know, um, the Bucks, okay. they, they let them know they're in management. You know, Omega, he, you know, he makes it known he's in management. But I think what what's humbling about them is even though they're in management, they're not taking advantage of that, put, they're always booking themselves in the top spot. I mean, look at Omega's the champion now, but it took him, what, two years to get there? Right. right. Young Bucks are the tag champions, but it took them, what, two years to get there? And now mm-hmm. they're asserting their dominance. So they had it mm-hmm. out there where they can get all these other talents in and out there and stuff like that. Like, you saw the first ever tag team champions was one of my favorites. I like. I think they're very underrated. was SCU. Daniel Scor- uh, Scorpio Sky and yeah. uh, Kazarian. Yeah. No, no, I totally agree. And it does make sense, right? Because the narrative would have been bad if they would have just, okay, they all come over, bang, they're all the champs. It's like, okay, you know what I mean? Like, that was, a lot of people would have said that it was expected, you know what I mean? So I, I do, I, I definitely get where you're going with that. That makes a lot of sense, you know what I mean? Now, some of the, some of the other criticism I've heard of, of you know, the AEW top guys, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Joe, I've seen you kind of say this on groups, and it's kind of true. It's like, but what do you think, Sean? You know, uh, we're all minorities here. You know what I mean? But a little mm-hmm. bit whitewashed. True. Yeah. And, and, you know, and there's not a lot of, you know, actually minorities on there. Um, you're, you're right about that. I, I think yeah. that's why when I see certain people that finally get their stuff together. Like going back to Raw, one of the bright spots for Raw me is now seeing Damian Priest. I knew him as Punisher Martinez and RH. Yes, sir. He's getting his stuff together. He got it together <laughs> towards the end of NXT. Now you, he put it all together. He's put that m- mentality himself in his character. And look, and look at the man is doing good things on Raw. Yes, he is. So I can see yeah. him eventually becoming a faceplate on Raw if they build around him. I mean, that, he just looks like uh, Bobby Lashley's champ right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bobby Lashley's champ. You know, uh, you had New Day uh, making their run, and now Big E is, is doing his thing as Intercontinental. And you definitely know Big E uh, in the future is, is going to be a, a champ. Um, you know, you got Montez. I mean, he's killing it. Uh, Bianca Belair right now mm-hmm. is fucking killing it. Deservedly so, man. She's one of the uh, best things and, and brightest things uh, about wrestling right now, uh, Bianca Belair, you know. Um, yeah. Now, I don't know if y'all know, uh, Olympic champion, uh, he won the gold medal, uh, Gabe Stevenson, 
He just won in Japan. Uh, he won a gold medal. He's on his way to WWE. Really? Uh, really? That's nice. Yeah. So yeah. they, they, you know, one of, one of the things, and, and Chuck, when I'm talking shit to the AEW people uh, on that page, I'm just talking shit. Like, you no, know, I know, too. Yeah, I, I, know. I, I, I do mean a lot of it, but it is a little bit <laughs> whitewashed. You know what I mean? And then people pr point to Brandy Rhodes and say, oh, well, well, you know what? I, I've always said like this, like, okay, I grew up, my stepdad's black, you know, I'm Mexican. I grew up on the east side of San Antonio, you know, man. Like, you know, it 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 it, it, it it's a rough hood. Um, but when you have to point to your one black friend that you have, you know, that yeah, you know, there's a problem. You know what I mean? Right. right. I, and, I, and I'm not saying, you know, yeah. I, I just say yeah. to fuck with AEW people, but you know, they're in Jacksonville, man. That's a um as someone that's traveled, um, you know, you know, I know Florida. It, it is very mixed, but you know, you get down there in the south, man, you can get a little nervous. I'll tell you right now, you oh, get yeah. a little nervous, especially for sure, for over there sure. in that area of Florida, bro. I mean, I, I feel you. Look, I get nervous going to Houston. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not bullshit. I'm just saying, I get nervous going to Houston, you know. So, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Certain areas, it's like, you don't matter where you are, it's like, mm. Like you know, oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. You. And me and Sean would text a lot about you know when the hurt business was going strong because I thought, man, what a smart idea! What a finally great. You know, you got MVP doing the voice work mainly, kind of being the representative because you know I don't know Lash has never really been too strong on the mic or whatever, but obviously no, great yeah. physique from back in the old days and 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 good in ring and and you know if he's not a face and you're not focusing on the army, you know, aspect of it, which is a great face aspect, then, you know, you go the other way and you make him these, you know, you put them all in suits. And, I mean, I was like, damn, this is a really good thing that WWE's yeah. doing. Like, I, I like it, you know what I mean? And it almost kind of, it almost kind of plays to the the idea without really saying it, but like kind of fucking with the good old boys, you know what I mean? Like, oh man, like these are the guys in charge, you know what I mean? Like, and I like that because that's kind of like that, not, I wouldn't call that cheap heat, but that's like that underlying heat. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, all right, I dig it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, uh, because that's still a good way to do it. You know, it's not like the old days, right? Where Hulk Hogan, you know I mean? Hulk Hogan can fight Sergeant Slaughter who starts siding with the Iron Sheik or whatever. You know what I mean? It's real <laughs> obvious. You, know, you can't yeah, right. do yeah. that anymore, you know? <laughs> but, you know, this is what bothered me about the her business. I think it was something that they didn't expect it to take off. Because as you recall, last he came in, he was kind of fledgling with this whole Lana mm -hmm. Rusev mess, which yeah. I was like, that was a Nothing weird, going on. Yeah. That was a weird freaking storyline. And I was like, as Rusev, I was like, how are you sitting there watching your wife make out with this dude on camera all day long? You just sitting there. You know, right. like, yeah. But Benjamin, one of the most technically sound, you know, agility having people. Cedric Alexander, the same thing. They were fledgling. Like Benjamin, I felt he got treated. He literally got shitted on since he was part of the world greatest tag team and he had his intercontinental run. Yeah. But it took MVP to come in, put them together, and then start getting them airtime, TV time. And then it started building. And then next thing you know, you put them up against New Day, and then her business is getting more cheers than New Day. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and as soon as that took off, and the merchandise, because like hell, I got almost all their shirts. The only shirt I'm missing is Cedric Alexander, her oh, business okay. shirt. But as soon oh. as that took off, they killed it. Yeah, right. Oh, like, right. Um, who else is it? Um, I'm I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with Biggie, because yeah. I want to know. Our, you know, right now it's hard to you know he's. He's he's a good you know he's a good wrestler, but it's hard to take that silly you know, silly personality. Yeah, silly self serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. You see him last Friday when he's just sitting there, and he's holding the money in the bank, and he's just laughing all goofy. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but, like, why are you gonna make him seem like a cartoon character? That that yeah, yeah, that's what they messed up with with the new day for so long is that it was like the trombone and the pancakes, and I get it, that's fun for the kids, but I'm like. Well, you know what? See, when I think about it in that way, then it's kind of okay or whatever, but it makes it hard for those guys to get over with audience our age. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to not gonna work. Uh, Jason, but, good night. Thank you for joining us, man. Appreciate it, brother. Um, um, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'll tell you both of y'all right now, uh, 
that time when Big E makes that heel turn and, and goes to straight serious, that's going to be some fucking hot shit. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. I loved when it. It kind of happened. When, when Heyman had that talk with him on, was it a talking smack or after whatever the after show was? Yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. damn, are they shooting right now? Because that seemed so real. And it was like, it looked like Biggie's eyes were like, you know, like just, and I was like, damn, this is a good, because you know that Heyman sees that stuff in certain guys. And oh, if, yeah. if Biggie's going to get that run, it's like, isn't it? A, like, I mean, it's, it's, it will be great, but damn, it's like, the guy's been around and he kind of came in touted as this big guy, strong man. And then it was like, he didn't even get like a Mark Henry ish run. It's like, they kind of keep him in this comical gimmick for like a long time. And I know that sounds again, that's like an older guy's perspective. Cause shit, I don't know what the new day's shirts numbers were, but they were probably selling like crazy. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you know, Vince isn't going to take you out of the gimmick if you're making money. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and you know, that was the final straw that broke the Cody Rhodes back, right, while he left. Because they had him in that Stardust gimmick. Right. That, to me, that I give Cody all the respect because no matter what they gave Cody, he made the shit work. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you right now, Stardust was fucking over. Yes. But what happened was Dusty died. Cody asked, could he go back to being Cody Rhodes in memory of his father? They told me, why would you want to do that? You're over at Stardust. Yeah. Yeah. That right there. It's like my father, who was a staple that, you know, helped bring in all these characters. Uh, Dusty was the brainchild with Bray Wyatt behind Bray Wyatt's character. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to tell me my father died. You're going to say, well, why are you going to keep me wanting to keep playing this cartoon ass gimmick with face paint when I want to go back and be yeah. Cody Rhodes again? You know, my father. So he said, he, has had interviews where he said that was the last straw that broke the camera's yeah. back. Yeah, and here was the, the thing with Cody for me is Cody did the right thing. Mm-hmm. He left on good terms, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't, you know, uh, quit or nothing like that. He went out and he proved to everyone what we all fucking knew is that he was a star. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Again, right. you know who else did that? You know, Drew McIntyre did that. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Bobby Lashley did that mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Jinder Mahal did that. Um, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They went out, you know, they got let go, they got released, they went out, and hey, fuck it, we're gonna be a star somewhere, you know, you're gonna see it or someone else's. And they went and made names for themselves, um, and came back. Cody one day is gonna come back to the WWE. I'm telling y'all right now, yeah. Um, I that's what I think, you know. Mm-hmm. Cody one day is gonna come back because that's what he it's what his dad would have done. He did it many times. Um yeah. I I I think so. Um, you know, while I'm rooting for AEW the last, you know, I don't know how how long it will. You know, I, I think Cody might come back one day and either and it, it might just be a WWE Hall of Fame deal. Yeah. But you know, Cody even like like I said, I talked about the legacy uh, angle. Cody's always been one of my fucking favorites, man. Like, um, uh, I, I was a big Dusty fan. I I like the fucking American Dream, Dusty oh, yeah. Rhodes. You know, you know what I'm saying? Okay, uh, uh, like I said, you know, my dad's uh, my step my stepdad is black. You know, came from an interracial family. To see him back in the day, and this was the '80s, so you didn't see shit like this, but. You know, as a white man with with his fan that was a, a, a black girl. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you didn't see that shit a lot. You didn't see that kind of mixed up. You know, people give Vince a lot of shit, but, I mean, who would have put that shit together back in the day? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Uh, uh, guys, give man, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Sean. Go ahead. No, I'm going to agree with him that I give Vince a lot of credit because Vince, he took his dad, he took the baton from his dad and he transcended it. But I think even with him doing that, that sometimes Vince gets focused on dollar signs instead of what will work. Like, you know, and still he's doing like some of the cartoon gimmicks because a lot of the things they do now, a lot of people have said, and there's been been writers that have left WWE because they're fed up with it because they said, 
It's like you're only there to really entertain Vince. As long as he entertains Vince, whether it makes sense or not, that's what he wants to go with. Yeah. I yeah. think just it, what he needs, you know, just kind of gauging the culture right now. And I think Triple H was starting to touch on it. At this time, you got to make a hybrid product. You got to take like the smash mouth fighting of the 80s, the attitude of the 90s, the realism, you know, in your feelings, in your face feelings of now to make a successful product. Yeah. No, totally, man. I, I yeah. agree with both of you guys on, on that stuff. And and I and I also do see Vince's perspective, you know what I mean? Like kind of going back to the Cody thing, it's like, hey, if you've got Stardust figures flying off the shelf and Cody Rhodes figures are sitting on the peg, it's like, hey, man, I mean, like this is my business perspective. And if you want to go, that's cool. And like you said, Joe, they're on good terms. You know what I mean? Like, And I think that Cody did do the best thing he could do because uh, some of his best work, I mean, I have seen over there at AEW. I love the the breaking the throne thing. You know what I mean? The Triple H throne. I love that moment. You know, I love, number one, watching him fight, you know, his brother Goldust you know, till they're bloody. And then I loved him saying, you know, I need you as my tag team partner. Like, you know, right. and like, dude, I was like, again, a moment in tears. And I was like, wow, AEW did it. They managed to give me one of those moments. So I totally, totally love that uh, stuff. Uh, but guys, we've been going at it for about 30 minutes. Uh, Y'all have been super amazing. Sean, I want to thank you for hanging out uh, almost the entire show waiting to get on. I know we were waiting for Joe. Joe, thank you for coming on late. Uh, yeah, sorry no, about that. no, 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 no worries, man. You guys deserve an entire episode. I want to give that to you. I want to have Double A here. I want to have Albert here uh, because I, I I know that Albert will not be cordial and he'll make the conversation go go uh, wonky uh, because he 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 cornered me in a bar the other day and was just like going off about AEW all night and I was like I didn't even say anything about wrestling. Like what are you talking about? Oh but, man, uh, that, that first night me and Albert met, man, he was just like AEW <laughs> this and AEW that. I tell you right now, it, you know, product's not that good. Hey, it, it's still real to him, man. It's still real yeah. to him. But uh, guys, you let, me, all. let me throw up your banners one more time. Joe, we didn't talk at all about the fact that you have a podcast where you don't talk at all about wrestling. The Now what? Watch This podcast. <laughs> That's uh, go ahead, not, Joe, plug your stuff. Well, that is not true, CM Chuck. You know, we did do an episode uh, about, um, what was that? No movie? Holds Barred. No Holds Barred, you know. <laughs> And that was uh, the great Hulk Hogan rip and, and Zeus rip. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, um, now it's just, you know, uh, pod again, it was born out of just another Friday night. I, I'm, you know, I'm very thankful to you guys. Uh, I've always been a big fan of, of you and Albert. I mean, uh, you and double a, I'm sorry. Um, you and double a, um, since the beginning and man, you know, Adam's a wealth of knowledge, uh, he's like a walking encyclopedia. Uh, talk about comic books, talk about anything. You know, I love when that guy just goes off on, on rants about this and that. And, and you just sit back and, and kind of let him go, you know, and, and you listen to him talk because, you know, he hit some places sometimes, you know, and, and you know, he, he'll, he'll tell you what they were thinking and why they were thinking it and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, his love for the Cowboys and Spurs, you know, <laughs> it is, is also, you know, a plus. Uh, but, you know, again, I was a big fan of Just Another Friday Night. Uh, met Lucky through that and through your show, um, you know, we kind of started talking about doing our own show. You know what I mean? And and um, I believe we're about 12 or 13 episodes in and, and you know, we're having fun. And it's for us, man. It's for people like us that, that like to watch movies. And we're not always going to do the movie that's out right now. Or, or you know, we're not always going to do uh, a popular movie or, you know, uh, the movie that everyone's doing. I mean, yeah. hell, we did Renaissance, man. Uh, again, the veto, you know what I mean? Um, uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's in, it's in it, people a lot, a lot of people are talking about it right now. But we did the Field of Dreams episode, uh, you know, and and our our goal is to you know talk about movies that we like, and hopefully we turn some people on to those movies. You know, Chuck, I know we've turned you on to a, a couple already. So absolutely, man, absolutely. Fun, man. So if you can go to nowwatchthispod dot com, it'll take you to all our shows. Uh, but on Facebook, we have the Now Watch This Watchers 
um, go on there, contribute, you know, talk about stuff that you want us to watch and, and you know, uh, we'll be on. So, yeah, that's a really great group, Sean. I got to add you in there, man, because, you know, you got a lot of uh, movie knowledge as well. Uh, well, Joe, I want to thank you for coming on again, man. Uh, love the show. Love what you're doing. I'm really so happy that you and Luck hooked up to do a show. Uh, it's been really consistent and I've enjoyed uh, every episode. I'm fully caught up, man. And I can't yeah. wait for the next one. So. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, man, and we'll, we'll do all this again. I'm going to get luck on an episode of this. Maybe next week, next uh, Friday, I'll be solo again in, in a sense. So hopefully luck will maybe be free. We can get him to pop on. Yeah, so for the Just Another Friday Night listeners and, and watchers, um, you know, go back to our third episode, and we had the great CM <laughs> Chuck on. And uh, you can go on to our last, our next episode coming out. And we have our returning guests, our, our only guests that we've had so far, but uh, the great CM Chuck. So uh, please go watch him. You're too kind, Joe. You're too kind. And you'll like that third episode, uh, Sean, because we do clerks on their third episode. So awesome. <laughs> I'm on that. Yeah. All right, Joe, I'm going to let you pop out, brother. I appreciate you being here, man. Thanks. Yes. Thank you, guys. See you guys. Uh, see you, Joe. All right, Sean. Sean, thank you so much, man, for hanging out, being so patient uh, during uh, all that. I know it was just a tip of the iceberg for you, man, because I know you've got a lot, a lot of wrestling thoughts and, and uh, great stuff that we always talk about, man. But um, feel free to plug yourself uh, where people can find you at. Um, talk more wrestling. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it was awesome. You know, thank you. Like, I know we've talked about getting on the show together and stuff like that or having me on and, you know, meeting, you know, with you know, Dan and Joe and everything. So this was great. You know, like I said, conversation about the sport. I mean, it's all love. it's all love. You know, you take every opinion. It, you know, it's all love. You know, fans of all the same. You, everybody has their own opinion. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok. I mean, I don't I don't really do content on Twitter or TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm there. You know, you want to spark a conversation? You want to discuss some stuff? Go back to the '80s. You know, go '90s era, 2000s. You know, some movies. I'm have some knowledge of some movies, stuff like that, a little bit of movie buff. <laughs> but definitely, you know, the sport of wrestling, or if you just want to even just talk about the characters in general, what's, what you feel is the best part. I'm always open for a conversation. I love hearing people's opinions, you know, and, going, yeah. and just going back and forth. Because that's, to me, that's what a true fan of the sport is. You know, everybody's going to have their favorites. Everybody's going to have what they love and what they hate. But the fact that you can sit down and voice it back and forth, you know, give it everybody food for thought, you know, that's that's what it's all about. That's all love right there. You know what I mean? No, totally, Sean, 100 percent, man. And, you know, what I love is that, like, you know, we work together for a very brief time. But in that brief time, we formed a, a big bond. And I think we've become better friends outside of the short time we work together through a love, a, a shared love of wrestling. You know what I mean? Not to mention, you know, pop culture and other things like that or whatever, man. But uh yeah, man, I'm, I'm so glad I finally got to get you on. I, 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 it sucks that it was brief, but believe me, this is just the first of many, man. And I, I do want that round table to happen because uh, I love what I love about you is that you're such a uh, um, a fan that uh, doesn't uh, choose sides. You know what I mean? You, you're like, I like good things from both and you can see the good things in both and you can see it from, a, a, I would almost say an old school promoter's perspective where you're like, these things are good. These things are bad. This is what they got to do right to get it back to good. Like you said right there, you were saying the smash mouth style of the 80s, but the 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 attitude of the 90s or whatever, you know what I mean? And, and bringing all that in. I mean, I think that's that's some great uh, perspective right there. Oh, yeah. You know, I think that's what it's what it would take. I mean, to get to this new level, the new incoming thing. And yeah. that's going to the longevity of the sport is bridging that gap. Mm -hmm. You want to where you have the grandfather is bringing the son, who's bringing the grandson, who's bringing the son new new child in, the grandson's new yeah. child in. You want totally. that longevity. So totally. I think that's why a lot of the promoters may not be acknowledging. But that's why I said if I ever am lucky enough, you know, I, one of these power balls, man, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna merge with somebody and like, look, this is what we're gonna have to do. I was like, yeah. no, Vince, give me the keys. Let me let me talk you to the promised land, Vince. I'd say, yeah, man. Let you let you drive for for a story arc. You know what I mean? Or even take one guy and say, look, I promise you, I can make this guy sell. You know what I mean? Like, I believe that. You know, me and you, you have know, talked those conversations too. Yeah, and honestly, if they were smart, they were cross promotion because the WWE fans would get a shot, get us look at AEW, 
AEW fans, we get a look at WWE. Yep. New Japan, we get a look, and that's another reason. Like what I was, I was going to tell Joe, I'm I'm digging AEW because why they're breaking that fourth wall. You have people from Impact coming in, ROH, NWA, which I didn't even know NWA was still active and going. Yeah, yeah, and you have New Japan starting to come to AEW, and what you do is you draw new eyes because word of mouth gets going around and they start promoting, you start promoting, everybody eats at the table instead of it's me exactly. versus you. So. Exactly, man. Great stuff, Sean. Sean, again, thank you so much, man, for hanging out uh, for the majority of the night and the majority of the show. I, I really loved having you on and appreciate the content, brother, but uh, we'll talk to you again soon, all right? All right, no problem. You have a good one. Take care. All right, Sean, have a good night, man. Appreciate you, brother. All right, bye. All right, guys, and I'm solo here. Uh, sis, you ready to pop back in here? Uh, we also are going to bring back in. We got Foxy Roxy. Foxy Roxy, you still around there? All right. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see. Let mommy sit down real quick. All right, guys. Uh, that was some great, great wrestling insight. Uh, thanks, everyone, that stuck around for that and enjoyed it. Uh, the other chair is back there if you want to get it, uh, monkey. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, John is gone for the Night Rocks. Oh, that's it. that's it. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, yeah, I can. I just, I was being quiet for him. He's a uh, conked out. He had about oh. about three drinks on an empty stomach before <laughs> eating pizza. He likes some strong cocktails too, right? So that's uh, already yeah. a, different, a different set. He, um, he tried well, something that, else too. Hmm. Yeah, I got you ladies here. So you guys tell me, what would you like to talk about? What would you want to say to the, the Friday Night Faithful, the just another the Friday Night, the Friday Nighters like yourselves? Uh, how's it been 75 episodes later? <laughs> I mean, I absolutely love the show. Um, not every episode I can get into, uh, although I love wrestling. Um, sure. Some of the episodes are about wrestling. Mm -hmm. and that's why I kind of skipped out at the end because I'm not – uh, well versed in the wrestling world, like yeah, I yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, totally should okay. be, I guess. That's totally okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> but um, I love you guys. I'm so I'm always so proud of you guys for even doing this and putting yourselves out there and um, just making it happen. You know, it's it's a uh, it's not something easy. I see that you always have to like you know edit and put things together and and kind of keep people interested in the show. Right. And I know it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and yeah. Um, I think that you guys just kick ass, and I love, I love it. I love oh, it. Well, thank you, sis. I and appreciate I, it's a, that. It's an honor when I get to be on the show. I really love that <laughs> aspect of it. It's not always, but you know, hopefully next time I get on, it can be uh, about a single topic. And I think so. Something yeah. that I can really get into. I'm thinking on on next week's, uh, which will be our season four premiere uh we'll probably keep it like mm -hmm. kind of the normal format uh again since this kind of all happened i wanted to just do like a, a free for all but roxanne what do you think i love you know from the beginning i loved your show you know i actually really dug it when it was just the audio um <laughs> because what i liked about it is i could <laughs> put too. it on as i was cleaning yeah when i was cleaning Boom, you guys were just like in my living room or in my kitchen. <laughs> and I was, you know, yeah. you know. Um, but how you have it now where it's on the YouTube, I just that now I feel like I want to watch it. Right. So right. I don't just have it in the background, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's there, the option is there. So I, I get that. I get that. But you can always still hear it the old way on Spotify. That's why we keep it that way. Yeah. That's actually how I listen to it. I rarely listen to our YouTube versions. Unless we have a uh, an opportunity to, uh, we're saying something and I, I miss it, whatever because we go to break. Like anyone listening to this version on audio is going to be like, "What the fuck happened?" Like there's like these big old chunks missing, so you're going to have yeah. to go watch the YouTube because yeah. I failed to hit any of our breaks at all, which I normally don't am good about. But <laughs> I guess because the weird situation or yeah, whatever, not not as good on. about it. Uh, Joe says, thanks for having me on, brother. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thanks for coming on, and uh, we appreciate you uh, making time for us. And he also says he loves the show and the faithful, so thank you, Joe. Uh, Rox, your episode was one of our highest rated, uh, highest viewed episodes for a long time. Um, between uh, uh, I still, I still recommend it too to people. I say, hey, I was on this episode, and <laughs> a lot of times they were introduced to you through that episode because I had. Yeah. promoted it so much you know yeah i appreciate it man i'm hoping you'll because, bump us up again <laughs> uh, yeah and plus i love talking about werewolves i still talk i still 
talk about that show and talk about what I talked about on that show, which is the list of werewolf movies. And I said, I say this on this podcast. Listen to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally, man. I, I love that one, too, because I love the opportunity to talk about werewolves. It's funny because Double A just added me to some group uh, that's specifically about that werewolf show that I told you guys about from back in, like, the 80s or whatever. I was like, there's a whole group dedicated to this. But you know how it is with any one thing people love, then there will be people that make a, you know, they'll gather to talk about it. You know what I mean? So. Pretty I had sweet. never heard of it until you had mentioned it. And then after you mentioned it, I see it everywhere. I'm like, Who, who's seen this episode of this? And I'm like, y'all remember that? I didn't remember it. <laughs> and I want to see it now. I'm like dying to watch it or whatever. But well, Roxanne, you, I wanna... still, you still have to watch The Howling. I have it. Yes. Okay. I haven't seen that one either. Let's so. do it. I want to watch it. I love werewolf stuff, so I will definitely watch it or whatever. And I still have, I think I, oh, no, I think I just gave it back, but I still had uh uh, double A's copy of the uh, the dogs one, dog soldiers, dog soldiers. Yeah, <laughs> I so, love that. One. I just gave it back, and I'm about to get back into spooky mood right now because I I figure now why don't we just commandeer August and September for spooky season as well? I'll just take the whole thing. What I do Monday. This is all gonna be Halloween. There we go. <laughs> I'm hoping Amy will set something up right here for next week so we can have a better. Yeah, a better I'm probably gonna I'm gonna have to get in the attic and get the stuff down and yeah, I do it up too. Well, Roxanne, I want to give you a major big thanks for helping me out tonight and being uh, one of my many guest hosts, and you and John. And uh, what's planned for the rest of the night? You're going to just hang out? I'm going to finish watching Manhunter because uh, <laughs> I never – I never saw it, and it's basically oh. Red Dragon, but yeah. before. <laughs> Double A loves that one. He actually says he prefers it to Red Dragon. I well, a lot of times that. people were talking to me about it, and I was saying, you know, this is – uh, before anybody saw Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter, so this is what was the, int the introduction. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And what's his name is good, Brian. Uh, Brian Cox. Yeah. Brian Cox. Yeah. Yeah. You never seen that one? No. Oh, okay. I gotta show you that one. I think that's on Shutter. Okay. It's on Shutter. Okay, I'll definitely show Amy. <laughs> that's like sure. one of my favorite. Uh, well, I guess trilogy. I, I wonder what you'll think seeing it as a different take. Somebody else's Hannibal Lecter, somebody else's Will Grant. You'll probably be like, "What the hell?" But yeah. uh, Double A swears by William Peterson's performance, um, yeah. which you know, I, the not to bring the books in because I don't like to mix mediums, but it, it's different. I like Norton's performance better, but I just like that movie better, and I like Anthony Hopkins better. But, but right. I, Manhunter is very good, though. Like I, th I think it's I think it's cool to watch as part of loving Hannibal Lecter because I love him just outright. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was, I was right now, I was talking to Jonathan. I said, I'm comparing each of the Hannibals, you know, mm -hmm. including Mass Miskelson from the, you know, TV series. Yeah. And there's all these Will Grams that you can compare now. And it's right. like, and the Jack Crawford, I, I just felt like, I don't know if I ever found a Jack Crawford that I really liked, even though I like Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like them. I mean, you know, there's that scene in the series where him and Hannibal go at it, which I was like, this is the shit. Like, yeah. I was like, ah. like the fight that scene is, was awesome. That, that is like my, my fucking favorite, man. So, yeah. But uh, again, Roxanne, thank you to Foxy Roxy. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for being a member of the Friday Night Faithful and being a Friday Nighter. Always true, a true, uh, I think, a true fan of the show, which I truly love and a true supporter. And uh, by and far, one of our best and favorite guests. Yay. I'm really, really, really honored that you wanted us, me and Jonathan, on the show again. It was very, very fun. What a fun evening for a Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. All right, Rox. Well, you have a good night, and we'll talk to you later and talk to you soon. Bye, Roxy. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yes, sir. I've still been waiting for you to show me the other Venom heads that you did. The other Venom heads? Mm -hmm. The who the artist I showed you on Instagram? Yeah, remember he did movie comments. Yes, I will show you those later. Um, but uh, I think we're getting ready to close the show. So, sis, anything you want to talk to about in these last fifteen minutes? This is almost gonna be like a three and a half hour show. <laughs> no, I <laughs> and mean you got to hear it all. <laughs> I did get to hear it all this time because I was in, I was in the mix. <laughs> but no, overall, I think it was a good show. You know, again, it uh, sucks that um, Double A couldn't be here. But yeah, you know, like we said in the beginning, everybody's trying to get better and mm -hmm. uh for future shows you know he'll be there yeah. so and i got to test some things too and double a could we could do a virtual next week if he wanted uh yeah you know but if not uh i'd like to have you back on as a guest or whatever Absolutely. maybe like you said we can talk I, about a topic or yeah whatever, I, i'll be so down for that and i can <clears throat> 
better prepare myself. So <laughs> yeah, like I said, there's sometimes things that me and Double A discuss, talk about. Like you know, me and Double A will never do a show about video games because, well, he doesn't really play video games, or whatever. Right. And I play very little video games. I play Fortnite with this guy. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So you know, we got to play some Fortnite tonight, hopefully. But one day, um, I want to have um, an episode. Oh, <laughs> well, you want to have an episode on just the Friday night about video games? No, um, I want to. About symbiotes? Oh, okay. Okay. We can definitely make that happen. Uh, Roxanne says, thank you guys for having us. Uh, you're very welcome, Roxanne. Uh, and uh, Joe says, uh, it's Friday the 13th show. And <laughs> Kid Jason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure, guys. Man, thank you guys all so much for coming out, helping, contributing tonight. I think it made it different. It made it a different kind of show, a variety show, a show without a topic or whatever. Um, but uh, Yeah, which is something that you guys never do. So, yeah, uh, something different, something to... Uh, enjoy and yeah so I'm it make, was good it was good yeah thank you like to alfred to jerry yeah, um to you know what i mean guests. like i said aaron b like everyone came out you know people Hello. have asked a long time you know hello obviously the I keep thinking the monkey of the monkey and donkey uh but to come out and kind of try to help make this uh 75th episode third season still be you know kind of special whatever not the same without double a but his beer remains up there uh cracked for him um and and you know again he's here with us in spirit i know always he loves the show so uh joe says amy needs her own show definitely man go back and hear our episodes with, with untamable amy for sure our comedy one is one i like a lot or whatever yeah so. that was a really good i like i really enjoyed that it was my first time uh, being on the show and yeah, uh, you were like my first ever like fully fledged like I had a full like other host besides right. Double A, which was yeah. like weird or whatever. Which I you know was but, really fun. but again, me and you have done this stuff. Like we used to record ourselves on a tape recorder. <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. So you know, we would do our movie reviews, what movies we wanted to see, or whatever. And believe it or not, like we were doing that so long. I but there has to be a tape somewhere where I think I say or we say like, oh, have you seen like that preview for that movie Forrest Gump? Like we want to watch that, which I think that came out in like '93. So it's like, I mean, we would we have been young. like, yeah, like, I mean, you know, Amy's five years younger than me or whatever. So in 93, I mean, I was probably like, I don't know what, 12, 12. So I mean, what are you, eight, eight then? Eight, eight nine, <laughs> 10, 11, 12. My math is terrible, but yeah, you'd be this guy's age. That would be awesome that. if I if we did have a tape. You we, might have one. I, we, I probably somewhere. have that cassette tape. So if anybody has a cassette player, you CM know what keeps I mean? everything. Let us know. You know Receipts I mean? and ticket stubs. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> You know, I heard that. Heard what? What did you? What do we say, Joe? <laughs> Joe, I'm glad you're still here, man. You're getting the Mick Ultras down, brother. Uh, we just, you just, need to catch up. We should just uh, uh, turn the turn the, the show off and then just drink some beers uh, virtually <laughs> together. So, uh, but uh, Amy, anything else? Final thoughts? Anything else you want to say? Add, contribute before no, we get just out. Just you here? guys stay safe out there. You know, take care of your friends and family, and you know, mask up. Just be safe, be smart, because, again, having it in our own home has, has been uh, an experience and something that we don't want to have to happen again. So we're just trying to take it day by day, and, you know, we all got to go to work and stuff. So Yeah, yeah, big time, guys. Guys, remember, if you want to pick up this shirt, you can do so at threeleggedrabbit.com. I have actually shirts on hand that are a little bit different, 20 to $23. Mainly, I have a bunch of size mediums. If you want one, let me know. Uh, please go check out uh, my lady Jess and uh, her uh, jewelry kind of online shop, uh, facebook.com slash trinket truck. You find stuff there. Uh, again, um, I'm going to say thanks to Chris uh, Rizzo, who uh, gave us a shout out earlier. He's over at Invincible Comics and more. That's his group. Check it out. Uh, Sean, who came in and helped us out talking all, about all things wrestling. Sean, one of the great wrestling fans still out there. Here's his info right there on TikTok and Twitter. Uh, obviously, Foxy Roxy, Madam Roxanne over on Instagram, all her funny costumes and her uh, amazing awesome um, stuff that she does there. Yeah. Joe from the Now Watch This podcast, please go uh, give them a like, follow, share. They've got everything that we've got TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and it's all there. Uh, Alfred from the Collector's Cove, we were hoping him and his lady a speedy recovery. Uh, Jerry D from the Totally Rad Christmas, super fun. I'm so happy to see Jerry. So happy to get him on. Yeah, I can't everyone. Wait to get into but that. yeah, really good. And of course, this guy right here, the monkey and the monkey unky. And the... Go find us on YouTube, guys. Give us a subscribe. The monkey and the unky. We got 13 subscribers right now, and our show is super fun and super short. It is not like this show. It is about 13 <laughs> minutes, uh, which is good. I tell it's sweet and short. I tell the monkey, yeah, that it's good that it's sweet and short. Yeah, you guys go check it out. Subscribe uh, for my baby. It's something you know he does yeah. that he enjoys doing with his uncle. And uh, you guys got to check it out. And I love it, too, because I get to play it twice. 
And then uh, Aaron B from uh, it was the big bite, but now no longer the big bite, but it's uh, YouTube uh, and Google. Just search Aaron Barish. That's what he said. He said he's the first one that comes up and he does. So there's some food reviews. He goes to Hop Dotties. Me and him went to Bandit. Uh, there's like a hidden episode somewhere, or like an episode that never made air that me and him went and ate at a place called Kai Kisters, Kai Casters Burgers, whatever, but it never made air or whatever. But um, I don't know. It was a cool stuff. He used to eat a bunch of burgers, but you know now he's doing different stuff, drinking coffee, and he gives motivational videos. It's fun. Follow right. Aaron on YouTube as right. well. Um, sis, there's nothing for you to plug social media wise, right? Nothing that you want people to. Until we get our show started or my like, own follow, show, share. Well, there you go. I, I would like you to start your own show. I'd watch it and I would listen to it, as as I they say. A... I now watch this. Keep watching. Keep listening. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, I don't know. What, no. what would your show be about? So this is you had your own show. You know, I know you and I have talked about this and uh I don't know, I guess it's just uh I'm real big on like the comedic side of life. Yeah, know? I agree um, to you. Uh just anything related to comedy, whether it's real life, movies, music, uh, you know, books, whatever, I think that I could really be good uh in that uh genre. I think so too. So, I think so too. I think that would be something, you know, funny stories, you know, from personal life experiences, because we both know that we have both experienced funny shit like that all the time. It's just like a regular thing in this household. So I think we tend to use humor as a deflective tool, a way to cope, you know, because I, mean? I know I always <laughs> think of something funny the first thing. You know what I mean? We just ran into an old friend uh, who actually told me that her dad had like a major surgery and had his eye removed. And the first thing that popped in my brain was like, pirate make a pirate joke. And I was like, <laughs> then my, my regular brain is like, don't make a pirate joke. That'd be like the worst thing you could say. And eventually I had the opportunity in the conversation to be like, you know what you should tell people when they ask why he got his eye out? He used to say that he really loves pirates. <laughs> and she laughed. She thought it was funny. And I yeah. was like, okay, you got to make light of it or whatever. But it was like, the joke was like, I guess I felt like that scene in Austin Powers where he's looking at the mole and he's like, oh, yeah. mole, well, he can't, can't stop focusing on it. But um do you know what we like to say at the end of this show? Sis, can you repeat it? Can you bring um, us out? I know that you say to seize the day. And I cannot remember wow. the other one. <laughs> Guys, so that's something we like to say at the end of every show, me and Double A, when we do it. Uh, Double A, a big fan of the movie um, uh, Dead Poet Society, Robin Williams or whatever. And there's a, a they, mm. and they bring up Carpe Diem, Carpe Diem Carpe Latin diem. for seize the day, guys. Uh, don't let any day pass you by. Every day is important. Every day is something that you want to make, you know, make happen. You know, uh, everyone literally that was uh, on this show tonight sees the day in some way, in some form that they're doing something, even if it was just coming to be on this show tonight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like Joe's saying here in the comments, uh, there's something you want to do. <laughs> Do it. You know, Joe was a podcast fan and then became a podcaster. And I said this before, you know what I mean? You know, uh, but I'm sure the same thing goes with Alfred, Jerry. Like Jerry said, you know, the same thing. He was like, someone told me you should have a podcast. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, sis, you should seize the day. Uh, <laughs> Jess with her jewelry, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Roxy with her costumes. I mean, like everyone, every single person here. And Absolutely. Double A, Double A, who sat down with me at a breakfast table, you know what I mean, uh, over a year ago and, and said, how do you do a podcast? And I was like, I don't know. I've been on them, but I don't know how to make one. But right. He That was his moment. And he seized the day with me to say, uh, let's do this. Let's talk about things we love or whatever. So uh, definitely seize the day, guys. Carpe diem. Uh, and the other thing we say is just like Captain America says in Avengers Endgame, when there's no other options and they have a chance to bring back half the universe, uh, he says, there's no chances to get it wrong. We got to do whatever it takes. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, guys, uh, like I, like Joe said, something you want to do, do it. Like I often say every time something you want to do, do it. Seize the day <laughs> yeah. and do whatever it takes. Guys, for myself, CM Chuck and... And Tamil with Amy here. And... The monkey. The monkey. <laughs> With the question mark at the end. The question mark at the end. This has been the 75th episode, but the 25th episode in this season, so the season finale, of Just Another Friday Night. Thank you all so much for being here. It was a long one, <laughs> uh, but a fun one, guys. Yeah, it was a combination, but it was something. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh, Joe says, good night, monkey. <laughs> all right, guys. We love you. Peace. Uh, be safe. Mask up. And if you haven't been vaccinated, please go get vaccinated. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.